Nikola Tesla once said the numbers 369 are the secret behind the universe. Tesla was a very curious person from his childhood, and was fascinated how small things produce big results. There's a story of how when he was a kid he went to a snowy mountain with his friends. The story goes that one of them threw their ball and it caused a mini avalanche, and ever since this moment Tesla was fascinated with how things worked, and it eventually put him on the path of wanting to understand the universe. This led Tesla to accomplish great things in the future, and it's reported that he was able to create a semi-earthquake by using vibrations on the 3rd of September 1899. With this technology, he was then able to do the same on the 6th of September 1899, and the 9th of September 1899. In regards to those incidents, he only reported that 369 was the key, and not only the key to certain inventions, but the key to the universe. And if people only knew about their significance, they would be able to achieve great things. After this discovery, it is reported that Tesla became obsessed with the numbers 369, and wanted to find out ways he could use them to his advantage. However, it's only fair if you present both sides of the argument. There are those that say Tesla was able to unlock these secrets, whereas others have said these are just stories and there's no evidence to back them up. The reason some believe it to be bogus is because Tesla was a good engineer, but wasn't good at selling his ideas, causing many people to come into his life and essentially copy his inventions and sell them as their own. With that being said, there are many that would have vouched for Tesla, and history has proved that Tesla was a man born in the wrong era. It's reported that he started to research the number 3. In fact, it's said by many that 3 is the base number of creation. Throughout the history of civilization, 3 has been seen as very important to culture, religion, and even science. It signifies unity, perfection, and creation, and it also represents the energy from the second day of creation in Tripod of Life, which is in the study of sacred geometry. Tripod of life are three circles, and when they overlap, energy is emitted. This energy increases our creativity and broadens our consciousness. Number six is seen to be twice as powerful as three, and nine is the jewel of the threes. Nine represents singularity as well as vacuum. Six contains the negative energies. Nine is also known as the seed of life, and is believed to serve as a blueprint for the universe and life. 369 is also considered by many as the mathematical fingerprint of God, and not in the sense of a being, but rather the sense of creation and everything that exists within the universe. Some may call this the universal consciousness, or the energy that flows throughout the cosmos. Here are some interesting examples. The circumference of a circle is 360, which is 3 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. The angles of a square are 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, which equals 360, which is 3 plus 6 plus 0, which equals 9. In a 3D square, you have 8 angles, which add up to 90 times 8, which equals 720, which is 7 plus 2 plus 0 equals 9. Also, in a pyramid, there are 5 angles, which is 90 times 5, which equals 450, and 4 plus 5 plus 0 equals 9. More examples include the Sun, Moon, and the Earth, with the Sun having a diameter of 864,000 miles, and 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. The Moon has a diameter of 2,160 miles, and 2 plus 1 plus 6 plus 0 equals 9. The Earth has a diameter of 7,920 miles, and 7 plus 9 plus 2 plus 0 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. All of these numbers always equal 3, 6, or 9, or in some cases equal 3, 6, 9. And it's through this that Tesla discovered that the universe was made up of energy, vibration, and frequency. 3, 6, 9 are the energy to form something, while the rest of the numbers 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8 represent the already inexistence ingredients for that something. Thus the structure of everything depends on the numbers 369, 
and it's only when you start looking at objects that appear in everyday nature that these numbers also add up to 3, 6 or 9. One thing that many may not be aware of is that Tesla was able to create artificial tidal waves. Artificial tidal waves known as tsunamis were researched to be used as weapons. It was to be developed as a tectonic weapon to unleash destructive tsunamis on the enemies, and it first came into being when an army officer named Gibson noticed small waves generated by explosions. The idea was then further developed under the name Project Seal by the United States and New Zealand military, and they found out the concept was doable, but no such weapons were made or used. The idea was tested by Professor Thomas Leach between 1944 and 1945, and British and US Army chiefs were eager to see it developed, and further research scientists said it had the potential to be as powerful as the nuclear bombs. The results were that small amount of explosives would not be able to produce a tsunami, but instead it required 2 million kilograms or 4.4 million pounds of explosives, and this was over 4.9 miles or 8 kilometers. Details of the experiment were released in 1999 by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and are now available in Archives New Zealand. It was deemed viable by several universities, but as of today there is no evidence or record of such a weapon ever being used. It's also led to other kinds of weapons to be produced as the military could not have accepted the losses. The bouncing bomb was made which contained 5 tons of explosives, and it was also created to explode in water. The bouncing bomb was unable to produce any tsunamis, but in some cases it could cause flooding. This is what happened when it was used against the Germans when it hit three dams and caused major flooding. Another interesting invention that's been linked to Nikola Tesla is that of the death ray, or death beam. It's been estimated by researchers that the death ray was first thought of in the 1920s and 1930s. Its main purpose was being able to take down enemies while the person using the machine was nowhere near them. It was thought to be made of particles which would then create a powerful beam. It was an electromagnetic weapon. In 1957, the National Inventors Council had added it to the needed military inventions. It is reported that Germany had two projects, and Japan had one to develop the death ray. Many people in the past have claimed to have invented the death ray, and these include Harry Grindel, Nikola Tesla and Antonio Longoria. All three had different types of death rays. Grindel's was allegedly able to take down humans, although further research provided that one was never created. Longoris could take down small pigeons and mice, while Nikola Tesla's was able to provide a ton of power and hit a tiny target. The most famous death ray concept was created by Tesla, and it's still focused on today. According to Tesla, if the death ray worked, there would have been no war in the world anymore, as each country would have been covered with impenetrable invisible walls, and no missiles would have been able to breach it. He called his death ray Teleforce and stated that it was incapable of killing any human being. He said that he had taken power from the Earth's ionosphere, which he called an invisible energy ball around the Earth. He'd also said that he'd reached the ionosphere with his 50 foot tall Tesla coil. The purpose of his death ray was to destroy anything that reached as near as 200 meters. Tesla also said he needed to build extra inventions in order to complete his death ray, and it would have helped the US armies to fight at sea. The researchers, keeping in mind the past accomplishments of Tesla, could not overlook the possibility of a scientific breakthrough by completion of the death ray. After a lot of effort, the researchers were able to find the power source that Tesla said was needed for the death ray. Interestingly, Henry Flair was thought to have also created one of these machines, and that he'd made a lot of people invest in his ideas. However, it turned out he didn't want anyone to see the progress of the project, and it ended up with them filing a lawsuit against him. The court was involved and Henry was told to demonstrate his death ray to win the case, and he did. His death ray was able to take down several reptiles and insects from 10 feet away. 
Interestingly, termites were taken out of a death ray within 35 seconds, while a lizard took 4 minutes and a snake took 8 minutes and 30 seconds. He won the case and was asked by the jury if the death ray could be used to take down humans, but he replied that he would not work in that area, but it could happen with increased power. Tesla is a true believer that everything is made out of matter. It all begins and ends with matter, and sound will never disappear once it's created. He firmly believed in the laws of creation and applied it to all his theories. Tesla said the following while being interviewed. I want it to illuminate the whole earth. There is enough electricity to become a second sun. Light would appear around the equator as a ring around Saturn. Mankind is not ready for the great and good. In Colorado Springs, I soaked the earth by electricity. Also, we can water the other energies, such as a positive mental energy. They are in the music of great composers or in the verses of great poets. In the Earth's interior, there are energy of joy, peace, and love. Their expressions are a flower that grows from the Earth. The food we get out of her and everything that makes man's homeland. I've spent years looking for the way this energy could influence people. The beauty in the scent of roses can be used as a medicine, and the sun rays as a food. Life has an infinite number of forms, and the duty of scientists is to find them in every form of matter. Three things are essential in all of this, and all I do is search for them. I know I will not find them, but I will not give up on them. Time has seen events in history and nature that cannot be explained. Be it unsolved crimes, objects with mysterious origins, or occurrences that simply don't make sense. The world has become a less mysterious place with developments in technology and science, as they have helped to unravel some of the biggest mysteries. With that being said, however, there are some that have remained unsolved, and to this day researchers are working hard to try and get answers for these cases. One interesting story is that of Francis Levy's handprint. A mysterious hand remained visible in the window of a fire station in Chicago after all attempts had been made to clean it. Even teams had been brought in to buff and scrape it off, but none of them were able to remove the mysterious handprint. As believed by many, the handprint was of a firefighter, Francis Levy, who had predicted the loss of his life while cleaning the very window back in 1924. On the 18th of April 1924, Francis Levy, a professional firefighter in the fire department of Chicago Fire Station, was busy doing cleanup and maintenance work, when his colleagues noticed that his behaviour was out of the ordinary. While washing one of the windows, Francis talked of having a strange feeling that he was going to lose his life that day. After the fateful utterances, a street conductor who was off duty noticed a building on fire a few blocks away. The four-story Currence Hall building was up in flames and the off-duty conductor managed to pull the fire alarm, after which the fire department of Chicago responded. Francis, who was at the moment engaged as a pipe man with Engine 107, was among the team that responded to the alarm. They arrived at the scene shortly after 7pm and started their work attacking the fire from both inside and outside, being able to access the upper floors through ladders. With no oxygen masks, the inside teams would take turns to pass the hoses and run to the windows for fresh air, before going back to put out the flames. As they were fighting the fire, some people noticed some anomalies, like the flames burning down the stairs as if burning with liquid oil, yet there shouldn't have been any oil at the current hall. The flames had weakened the building structure, and the ceiling collapsed around 13 minutes after this started to put the fire out crushing those inside the building, with the collapsing walls crushing the team that was manning the ladders. A total of nine firefighters, among them Francis Levy who lost their lives in the collapse, which also injured 20 more firefighters. William Bear, a civilian, lost his life while trying to save the firefighters who were trapped inside the building. The funerals for those who lost their lives were done between the dates of the 21st and 23rd. Six firefighters from Truck 12, 
two from Engine 5 and one from Engine 107, which was Francis Levy's Lost Their Lives. They later discovered this was an arson fire planted by a business selling sports goods and novelties on the second floor of the building, which was later sued for arson and murder. The fire spread like flowing liquid because wood alcohol had been poured in the building before the fire was lit. It's saddening to think of the firefighters who lost their lives, and those who lost friends, colleagues and families just so the owners of the sports shops could be paid out by the insurance company. People lost their lives and would never be able to talk to their loved ones again, and this happened just because someone was looking for a quick payout, and because of these stupid actions it changed these families' lives forever. The next day, one of the owners at the engine house noticed a strange stain on the window pane. The staff tried to wash it off and scrub it off in vain, and it instead started to become more clearer, taking the shape of a handprint. This was disturbing since Francis had cleaned the very spot when he spoke of his forthcoming demise the previous day. It was proposed that the glass be completely removed. This was after every attempt to remove the stain had failed. The employees however thought differently. Since no one knew the reason for it being there, it was better off left alone. The window panes stayed that way for many years in memory of Francis Levy, until around 20 years later on the 18th of April 1994, when a paper boy on his normal duty threw a newspaper at the window and destroyed it, together with the mysterious handprint that could not be erased. Another interesting story involving that of an apparition is that of the White Lady of Worcester Church. Diane Burflot had been sick for months after the removal of her gallbladder, and was on antibiotics when she visited St Mary's Church in Worstead in the UK. This was while being in the company of her husband Peter and their son. They went into the church to get out of the heat. Diane then sat on a bench near the front of the church and started to pray for healing. While she was doing this, her husband and son started taking photos inside the church. Diane recalls having a warm, tingly feeling as she bowed her head in prayer. After this, she started to feel better. Then after spending a few more minutes in the church, she went home and forgot about the incident. This was until six months later when they developed their photos to view their holiday snaps. They noticed something mysterious. In one of the photos, they saw a woman seated behind Diane, dressed in very old-fashioned clothes and having a glowing aurora. They were certain that day there was no one sitting that close to Diane. After seeing the photo, Diane recalled the tingling warm sensation that engulfed her whole body. The husband remembered moving around the whole church looking around, but said that he doesn't remember seeing anyone sitting that close to his wife. This made them curious and on their next holiday they decided to visit the church again. Diane and her husband went back to St Mary's Church, and while there they bumped into the vicar. They showed Reverend Petty the photos and he was surprised. The vicar narrated to them a local tale of a white lady who came to heal sick people. At the time they visited the church and took the photo, Diane was sick and on antibiotics. The story also has it that back in the 1830s, a man who lived in Warsteed heard of the story of the White Lady of the Warsteed Church, which claimed there was a lady who would appear on the eve of every Christmas at the church, and anyone who saw her would lose their life. This man who did not believe in such tales and said that he would be at the church on Christmas Eve, and that he would try to kiss the lady if he saw her. This was to test the truth of the legend. The man went into the church, and after taking too long inside, his friends went looking for him, and they ended up finding him huddled in one of the corners of the church, shaking and whispering that he'd seen her. The man ended up passing away soon after. The story soon took a turn, however, when multiple people who saw the woman felt a sensation come over them, and that they were ill at the time but started to feel much better. Diane continued to feel the tingling sensation every time she looked at the photo, and believes that the visit from the White Lady was a blessing. The photo at the moment is on display at the pub known as the White Lady, and since then there have been mysterious occurrences like flickering lights, glasses being moved around the pub and the feeling of a strange touch while in the cellar. This is more of a comforting haunting than a scary one, 
since people now believe that the White Lady lives in the building. The story of the White Lady has received a lot of adornment, and the pub has seen a large influx of people wanting to visit the building. This is in the hopes of getting a glimpse of the magical Lady in White. The owner of this building was inspired by its original home, which was initially the King's Head, with the White Lady being the reason for at least one ultimate loss of life on Christmas Eve. It will not come as a surprise to find out there are still some locals who think she is more of a mysterious spirit, deciding the fate of those who see her. As of today, there are those that believe she's an angel and helps those in need, while others describe her as doing God's work, and suggest that if someone has done something bad in their life, they will be punished. Another interesting story is that of the Michigan Angel. Going back a few years ago, a man claims that his security camera captured an angel. A man from Michigan claims that his security camera, which has a motion sensor captured what he believes was an angel floating over his truck. A fire chief from East Jordan said that seeing the image floating up and out of his camera frame astonished him. He told the local news stations that he was certain it was an angel, and couldn't wait to share the image with his wife and pastor. The pastor of the Jordan Rivers Church said that he freaked out upon seeing the photos, and believed in his mind that it was something supernatural. Soon after, the pastor posted it on the church's Facebook page, and said that it was indeed an angel. The photo attracted many online responses, even from atheists who stated the photo went viral because people were mixing up a moth with an angel. It's been shared on the Facebook page of the Jordan Rivers Church more than 500 times. The man from Michigan firmly believes that God answered his prayers, and sent him a guardian angel to protect him and his family. Astronauts have perhaps one of the coolest jobs in the world. Over 560 people have made it into space, and with new discoveries and technology, it's said that within the next few years that number will increase dramatically. Interestingly, over the past few decades, some of those who have ventured into space have reported seeing some mysterious anomalies. When astronauts come back and talk about these subjects, it usually makes the news. After all, these are the people that spent large amounts of time in space, so if you're going to believe anyone, it should be those who have been there. Dr. Helen Sharman is making the news for a statement she came out with. Reported by the BBC, they said that she said aliens exist and it's possible they are among us on Earth. She said the following about the subject. Aliens exist, there's no two ways about it. There must be all sorts of different forms of life among the billions of stars. Dr. Sharman is known for being the first British cosmonaut and the first woman to visit the Mir space station in May of 1991. Her take on aliens was that they might not look like humans, and they could be here on the planet right now and we may not be aware of it. This could be because we don't have the tools to be able to see them. This isn't the only interesting comment to come from an astronaut. Going back several years ago, an account of Dr. Story Musgrave details that of a strange creature outside of his spacecraft during two different solo space missions. He would, however, later go on to claim that he doesn't believe the sighting itself was evidence of extraterrestrial beings, and that they were not that of alien life. According to the story, as Dr. Story Musgrave was undergoing his solo mission, he described that he had begun to observe a strange snake-like creature following his craft, he would later provide an interview in 1994 in which he would state that the creature appeared to be a living snake, and that it moved across space and followed his craft for quite some time. He believed that perhaps the creature was terrestrial, and had gotten up to the upper atmosphere to journey close to the spacecraft. Additionally, Dr. Story Musgrave claimed that such creatures were common in space, and that during any prolonged space mission it was relatively common for him to see a space snake falling behind the craft. Dr. Story Musgrave would also gather clips of video footage of the space snakes, to which more closely resembled the creatures found here on Earth. Dr. Story Musgrave claims that to this day he's not entirely sure what the creatures could be, and that he has no explanation for the sightings. As of right now, the vastness of space has left it to be one of the last unexplored frontiers of the human race. 
With it also comes a wide number of strange and anomalous properties that even the most well-versed experts on the matter can't explain. When taking on astronauts to begin a long scientific endeavour or missions into the zero-gravity nature of space, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration takes an incredible amount of variables into account, and this is to ensure the safety and longevity of the mission. For as long as research plans have continued over the many decades that astronauts have been tasked with conducting scientific missions in space, the continued research into the effects of isolation, zero gravity in the environment of the vacuum of the surrounding space and the human mind and body have been gathered to better understand exactly what it is the astronauts must endure. Astronauts have carried out many missions on the International Space Station. For example, going back a few years ago, Researchers on board were able to find out that changes of gravity do more than just affect the astronauts on the International Space Station. When the National Aeronautics and Space Administration conducted research regarding bacterial growth of Salmonella in space, they found that for some strange reason the bacteria became far more dangerous after a spaceflight. Growing unrestricted in anti-gravity allowed the bacteria to become far more potent in nearly all regard, even compared to lower doses to the same bacteria on Earth. Many other strains of bacteria and viruses also demonstrated this rather horrifying behaviour, and it became mandatory in appearance that all astronauts must be completely screened for any potential viruses and bacteria. This is to make sure that a new strain is not formed accidentally in the confines of the space station. This means that though there are efforts currently being handled and made by the private space agency, astronauts can very well be subjected to far more aggressive diseases and illnesses while aboard the International Space Station as astronauts are constantly coming and going from the facility over time. Recently, NASA scientists have come forward and said that strange flashes of light can be seen on the moon's surface. As you can imagine, this has brought up all kinds of theories. Explanations so far have ranged from strange aerial phenomena to UFOs. This news comes not long after it was announced that our moon is shrinking. Scientists have said that their studies have shown that the inside of the moon is shriveled up and that deep cliffs can be found all over its surface. What's interesting is that this recent study suggests the moon could still be shrinking. The researchers have also come forward and said the moon's surface crust is brittle, and that due to the moon shrinking it's starting to break the surface. However, according to researchers, these lights have been puzzling scientists for years. This isn't the first time they've been seen but as of right now they're not sure what the lights are or where they're coming from. It's been said though that a newly developed telescope may be able to provide the answers. Incredibly, these flashing lights have been recorded since the 18th century, and going back then they called them the dancing lights. Astronomers have even reported that other areas of the moon have been seen glowing different colours such as red. Astronaut Michael Collins said the following about the lights. There is an area that is considerably more illuminated than the surrounding area. It seems to have a slight amount of fluorescence to it. A crater can be seen in the area around the crater is quite bright. As of right now, scientists have suggested that it could be something known as lunar transient phenomena. This is when a colour change happens on the surface of the moon for a short amount of time. Regardless, researchers will be carrying out an in-depth analysis of the lines. Another story comes from Gordon Cooper. One of the most influential American heroes of the 1950s, as well as the key figure in helping to locate a number of nuclear sites all around the world, was that of Major Gordon Cooper. Gordon Cooper has been a part of a number of top secret missions in space, with several revolving around the use of highly advanced technologies to find locations of interest all around the world. Interestingly enough, during one of his many space missions, he claimed to have come into contact with an extraterrestrial craft. During Gordon Cooper's space mission that included a solo journey with a planned 22-orbit trip around the Earth, he claimed to have seen a glowing object that appeared to be bright green begin to slowly approach his spacecraft as he viewed it through the porthole. Additionally, the approach of the object was also picked up by the tracking station located in Australia, confirming Cooper's encounter. This would lead to the astronaut eventually agreeing to take a two-day mission in which he would work to analyse footage and evidence of extraterrestrial visitations, 
that would eventually lead him giving a speech at the United Nations to discuss his findings. During his speech, he described later coming across evidence of extraterrestrial crafts, gathered evidence of anomalous aircraft as well as stating the following. I saw with my own eyes a defined air of ground being consumed with flames, with four indentations left by a flying object which had descended in the middle of a field. Beings had left the craft. There were other traces to prove this. They seemed to have studied topography. They had collected soil samples and eventually they returned to where they come from, disappearing at enormous speeds. Gordon Cooper would later go on to be a key figure in the alien awareness movement and claim that his findings and studies were being covered up by the United States government and this was under the claim that he was a national security threat for inciting panic. Despite his many years working for the government and assisting with efforts during the Cold War, Researchers and scientists have said it's likely that alien life is out there somewhere. Astronomers have estimated there's over 100 billion planets in the Milky Way alone. It's important to remember there's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. This puts the chances of there being life out there extremely high. The main issue we're facing at the moment is reaching these distant planets. With space being so vast, it could be thousands of years before we're able to successfully travel large distances through space. It's often a huge misconception that the ancestors of the past were overall less educated or incompetent compared to the people of the present. This statement could not be further from the truth, as archaeological evidence has shown that not only have our ancient ancestors made strides that we ourselves cannot replicate today, but they battled against the elements, disease and the worst the world had to offer long before they were able to relax and enjoy the fruits of their labour. Just because these structures exist however, it doesn't mean that researchers know how they were created, and today even some of the materials used are of unknown origin. One of these incredible civilizations is that of the ancient Egyptians. Pyramids have become known as one of the most renowned works of ancient humans, the most popular ones are found in Egypt and the Egyptian pharaohs had them built for them. The pyramids are basically tombs for the pharaohs where they were buried along with their treasure. Traps were also set and different mechanisms were planted so that no intruders could steal their treasure. The method of burial was also strange as they wrapped their bodies in bandages and left them in altars. Pyramids are also considered one of the seven wonders of the world with the Pyramid at Giza said to be one of the oldest and largest pyramids out there. The Great Pyramid of Giza was made 4,500 years ago, and it's had a number of different mechanisms which have fascinated the archaeologists time and time again. The Great Pyramid had three swivel doors and one of them is believed to have been a 20-ton swivel door. The mechanism of this 20-ton swivel door has surprised researchers as it's not sure how they achieved this. There are many mysteries related to the pyramids and some of them have only led to more questions being asked. It's estimated by researchers that around 5,000 pyramids may still be existing today. The stones that have been used to build these pyramids weigh between 5 and 10 tons, and to put that into perspective that's heavier than an elephant. At first it was believed that the pharaohs had slaves who did all the work, but later contradictions occurred and it was believed that the workers were paid to build these pyramids. The temperature outside the pyramid would have made it near impossible to work in. Researchers have said that during this time it would have been between 20 and 25 degrees, but when you're working for hours on end the construction of the pyramids would have taken their toll on the workers. The pyramids were also covered with well-polished limestone which made the pyramids glitter like gold in the sunlight. This 20-ton swivel door was said to have been so well balanced and built that it could have been opened from the inside of one hand. When the door was closed, it was built in such a way that it would have blended in with its surroundings and would have been near impossible to see. It serves its purpose as being a perfectly secret hidden door that can be used in case of emergency if there ever was one. The door was said to have had two parts and been the same colour as its surroundings. The archaeologists were not able to find it until they opened it from the inside. This door has astonished researchers and been described as being one of the most impressive feats. Another interesting discovery is that of the intricate tunnel systems discovered under the pyramids in Egypt. 
the Pyramid at Giza was holding a secret for many years, and this came in the form of tunnels, chambers and caves. When this structure was found, researchers discovered a lot of bats and venomous spiders that had taken up the space. One researcher was able to track down the entrance to the underground structure of the pyramid, and this was by using a book from a previous explorer. He discovered that the caves were hundreds, maybe thousands of years old, and may be the reason why the Egyptians believed in the underworld. Further saying they may have built the pyramids to conceal the passage, as the meaning of Giza is also the mouth of passages. For a long period of time, nobody had known these secret underground passages except for a few, but now they're coming to light and are raising a lot of questions. The entrance to the underground has been guarded, and strangely the Egyptians are reluctant to let anyone enter. Those who come to see the passages are bombarded with questions about how they knew about this place, and usually only let them enter if they pay a hefty sum. If someone is able to enter after paying, they are usually followed by a military police escort. Experts have claimed there is a lost city in the undergrounds of the pyramids. The unknown Giza Plateau has become even more mysterious after its cavern system. Subterranean passageways and chambers were discovered. These passageways hold walls which are thousands of years old. What made the people more curious is how the Egyptians sealed the information and location unlike making it public like they'd done with the pyramids. The discovery of the passageways and having little to no information about it shows that history is not being completely passed down. A lot of such places are denied by the Egyptian authorities, even though there is conclusive evidence that these places exist. It comes across as the Egyptians don't want to tell the world about what they know, and are being very secretive about the underworld that's been discovered. The two structures that were discovered are the well shaft and the grotto. The well shaft connects with the underground as is a passageway that goes 200 meters into the bedrock beneath the pyramids. Many theories were put forward for the use of this well shaft that included providing air to the workers, used as an escape route and to repair the king's chambers, but all these theories have been denied. The great pyramids were built and included many more tunnels that have been found. The issue is why have some of these channels and tunnels been kept secret, and not properly excavated? It's hard to know what's truth and what's fiction. The grotto is a natural chamber in the well shaft and lies beneath the bedrock of Giza, but the base was later used to build and construct a pyramid. This shows how the Egyptians did detailed planning before building a pyramid. Another interesting discovery is there appeared to be a massive underground water tunnel network that ran underneath the Giza Plateau that has long since dried out. This led researchers to look more into what is believed to be a naturally formed water chambers, and the role they could have played in the construction of the large pyramid. They found that although water beneath structures usually plays a large role in the instability of the base of the structure, it appears as if the network of tunnels and water chambers found in the pyramids appear to not threaten the stability of the pyramid. This led researchers to believe that the tunnels must have been accounted for in the construction of the pyramid, or possibly added after the construction with the pyramid stability in mind. Still to this day, Egyptologists and researchers are completely unaware as to what the role of these underwater chambers helped to play in the construction of the pyramids. The next thing researchers have struggled to explain is that of the mortar used. It's been reported that the mortar is of unknown origin. Along with its design, the mechanisms used inside the pyramids have also left researchers astonished. Looking at the structure from a purely mathematical standpoint, the Great Pyramids of Giza consist roughly of 2.3 million stone blocks, with each ranging from 2.5 to 15 tons apiece. According to supposed Egyptian documents discovered in nearby tombs and areas regarding the pyramids, the pharaoh recorded that only 20,000 workers built the pyramids over the course of 20 years. If that turns out to be the case according to these ancient Egyptian records, then that would mean to meet this requirement each worker would have to cut a block with perfect precision from a quarry, move this block to the pyramid alone, a task already impossible for a single man to do and then pull the block of the pyramid into its position without any help once every 30 days. This would mean that each block would need to be placed once every two and a half minutes, 
with each of the 20,000 workers tirelessly performing without a break. The main Egyptologists have concluded that the pyramids were built with the simplest of ways. The workers used copper chisels and iron tools, as well as flint, quartz and diorite powders. Ancient Egyptians did use some advanced methods of constructing, which included large wooden crowbars and wooden sledges. Though despite the defence mechanisms it's been agreed upon that the pyramid had already been looted and broken in before its discovery, as this is the only way to explain the disappearance of the treasure and the mummy from the pyramid. The architects also found the mortar that was used in the mechanisms, and it's been identified as an unknown object. The origin of the mortar is still unknown, and this has confused the researchers even more. The material has been tested and the mortar has been proven to contain parts of quartz, calcite and halite. Its chemical composition has been analysed by researchers, but through various experimentation they were not able to reproduce something having the same material as the mortar. Its durability was also tested in different experiments and it was deemed stronger than stone. Some of the most unexplored regions in the world are the mountains that can inhabit the most populated countries. This is due to overgrown wildlife, impossible to pass terrain and the overwhelming danger of overcoming one of the biggest obstacles in nature. This has also led many to conclude that there are strange objects that can be found in these regions. One of these goes by the name of the Mount Ararat Anomaly. Noah's Ark is a story that many of us have heard. It details the story of Noah, of whom was given the task of building a massive boat and placing on it examples of the world's animals. Interestingly, in recent years a few researchers have come forward and said that at one point in time a great flood did happen. Recent discoveries by underwater archaeologists suggested this event ended up sinking many cities. One such finding was made off the coast of Turkey where researchers found traces of ancient civilizations dating back since the time of Noah. One thing that's interesting is many civilizations talk about a great flood, and some of these are even documented. Some scientists don't actually doubt this happened, but have suggested it may not have been as massive as it's made out. For example, one theory is that the great flood could have been the flooding of the Black Sea. It's been put forward that rising water levels happened in this region around 7,000 years ago. When the European glaciers melted it caused the sea levels to rise significantly. Some have even suggested that it overflowed with a force 200 times greater than that of Niagara Falls. Although scientists think that it happened, there are questions about the actual event itself, suggesting there's no way the world's animals could have fit on one boat with some stating the obvious, such as how would the animals have been on the boat without attacking each other, and how did Noah get the animals on the boat in the first place? Many people are fascinated by the story of Noah's Ark, with some people even trying to build and replicate the entire thing. The search for Noah's Ark is never ending. Most of the search has been done on Mount Ararat in northeastern Turkey. To understand why Noah's Ark was never found, you need to be aware of the fact that the Bible says the Ark landed on the mountains of Ararat. This happened on the 150th day of the flood. It's important to mention that Mount Ararat rests upon volcanic strata right on top of sediments which are laid down by the flood. After researchers made their way to the anomaly they started to carry out some tests, and interestingly after getting the results back they confirmed what some believed. The results suggested that inside the anomaly was wood, and that it had been there for thousands of years. They claim this was part of the original structure and say this is proof that the story is found. Turkish and Chinese explorers say they're 99% sure this wood is the real deal. It was discovered by a 15-member team, and after carrying out further tests they were able to find out the wood in question was around 4,800 years old. Scientists have said however that none of this is possible. They say it's not scientifically conceivable that the Ark ended up on top of the 15,000 feet tall Mount Ararat. Further saying that quite simply there's not enough water on Earth to raise water levels that high. 
carrying on by saying in case you were thinking that plate tectonics raised the mountain's peak since Noah's time. Mount Ararat was just as tall and out of reach then as now. According to mainstream scientists, the anomaly is very unlikely to be an arc. Five years ago, Farouk Baz, director of the Boston University Center for Remote Sensing, told Life Science that believers are interpreting satellite images with a bias outlook. Going on to say the following, Up to this time, all the images I've seen can be interpreted as natural landforms. The feature that has been interpreted as the anomaly is to me a ledge of rock in partial shadow, with very thickness of snow and ice cover. But there are those that are loyal to the idea and say this is the real Noah's Ark. Another interesting mountain can be found in Queensland, Australia, and it's earned worldwide fame due to its peculiar nature and unending witness reports. The mountain is known as the Black Mountain, and not only is it famous for strange and unexplainable disappearances of even the most talented and skilled hikers and outdoorsmen, but it also appears to be at the center of strange unidentified creatures roaming the mountain alongside shadowy figures. Many locals have often reported seeing the ghost of a medicine man standing on the many different boulders that litter the mountainside, as if his spirit plays a hand in the strange occurrences. Alongside this, reports have been made that farmers and ranch owners traveling through the area alongside their herds of cattle have completely vanished, with the herdsmen and the entire herds of animals never to be seen or heard from again. Commonly, it's been noted by pilots that instruments of their aircraft will begin to act strangely, and that compasses will no longer point in the direction required to get a proper bearing when flying over the mountain. The locals have often told stories of travelers of whom were hiking the location, and they would trip or fall because they would feel as if hands would come from the ground and try to pull them underneath. Stories regarding the mountain are seemingly unending, and when asking any number of locals, stories will be told from many different perspectives and witness accounts that seem impossible to understand. Some have claimed that the mountain is completely abandoned by wildlife, and that animals will attempt to flee the area if they find themselves near. Others have claimed the mountain has living caves that will swallow and digest anyone who enters. Although nothing is known for certain, the number of reported missing cases seems to be more than enough cause for alarm to warn travelers from ever visiting the location. Over the past several decades, there have been numerous accounts of people going missing while on mountains. This has led to the theory that perhaps these regions are the home to some kind of time portals. The reason people say this is because many have reported losing a large amount of time while on mountains. For example, one hiker detailed that while she was walking on the Untersberg mountain, she saw something strange. She could see what appeared to be a tall humanoid in the distance. She detailed how this person didn't look anatomically correct, saying that the arms, legs and neck were much longer than a modern human's. As she approached the being, she said she felt very calm almost as if this being was giving off a positive presence. The being told her that these mountains were used as portals by beings not from this planet. She details that the humanoid didn't tell her where they were from, but did say that humans need to try better and that this planet is incredibly special. She then watched as the being walked into a bright area and then vanished. Of course, this account was met with criticism, with some saying the person was just outright lying. It does sound unbelievable, but incredibly, this isn't the only place where this kind of thing has been reported. Another place is that of Skinwalker Ranch. The previous owners would tell stories about mysterious crafts flying through holes in the sky. In fact, on one occasion, the owner said he noticed a large object flying through a bright lit area in the sky, saying that the object in question was around 60 feet in diameter and gave off a blue light. In fact, he said this wasn't rare to see either. The whole family who lived on the ranch during that period observed these mysterious crimes. Going back to the Untersberg mountain, they can be found amongst the Alps on the border of the countries of Germany and Austria. Although the site is regarded as one of the prime hiking spots for travelers coming from all around the world just to bask in its scenic beauty, it appears that the mountain holds a more sinister history Researchers often regard the Untersberg Mountain as one of the most mysterious mountains in the world, 
due to the fact that it appears to be at the centre of many different rumours that believe the mountains to hold ancient lost civilizations and strange never before seen creatures in its forests. Reports say that travellers will often go missing in this region and some will encounter beings they can't explain. Sometimes this doesn't always happen though, with some saying they suddenly wake up after being missing for several hours. Not only this but they have no idea where they've been during this time. As of today many of these mysterious reports remain unsolved and those who have lost friends or family members in these regions are left wondering what happened to them. As of today these regions are still popular with tourists and people and every so often a story will pop up that reminds people why these places are shrouded in mystery. Our planet is the only astronomical object that is known to harbour life. Nonetheless, there are some interesting facts and discoveries that have been made about outer space in our solar system. It just so happens that Earth is not the only interesting planet in our solar system. Saturn is regarded by astronomers as a gas giant, with an average radius approximately 9 times larger than Earth's. Although Saturn only has one eighth of the average density of the Earth, it possesses much more volumes which makes it more than 95 times more massive. Saturn is unique among the planets. It's a massive ball made mostly of hydrogen and helium, and it's adorned with thousands of beautiful ringlets. Some interesting facts and discoveries have been made about this gas giant, and one of the most notable of these discoveries is Saturn's new massive ring. Going back in 2009, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope had discovered a massive ring around Saturn, by far the largest of the many rings of the giant planet. This ring was previously unknown to astronomers, and yet it had suddenly been discovered around the planet, showing researchers how little we really know about our solar system, let alone the universe. An astronomer at the University of Virginia Charlottesville, Dr. Anna Wurzbeer described the infrared ring as one supersized ring. In her words, she claimed that if you could see the ring in the night sky it would span the width of two full moons. This giant new ring is at the end of the Saturn system, with an orbit inclined at 27 degrees from the plane of the main ring. Most of its material begins around 6 million kilometres or approximately 3.7 million miles from the planet, and extends outwards by another 12 million kilometres which is roughly 7.4 million miles. One of Saturn's most distant moons Phoebe surrounds the new ring, and is presumed to be the source of its material. The ring is also thick, it measures around 20 times the diameter of the planet. This ring is capable of accommodating a billion planets the size of Earth if they were stacked together. The ring is made up of mostly dispersed ice and dust particles. Spitzer's infrared tests were able to detect the brightness and glow of the cool dust, which has a temperature of around 80 Kelvin which is minus 315 degrees. This interesting discovery debunks the idea that planetary rings are usually found close to their planet, and goes to show that although we can't see them it doesn't mean they're not there. This discovery can also help to solve a century old enigma of one of Saturn's moon. Iapetus is known for its strange appearance. It has one bright side while the other is really dark, in a pattern reminiscent of the yin yang symbol. Astronomer Giovanni Cassini saw the moon for the first time in 1671, and years later he discovered that it had a dark side, now called the Cassini Rigo in his honour. Saturn's new massive ring could explain how Cassini Rigo came to be. The ring turns in the same direction as Saturn's outer moon Phoebe, while Iapetus along with the other rings and most of Saturn's moons go in the opposite direction. According to the scientists, some of the dark and dusky material of the outer ring moves inwards towards Iapetus. One of the researchers said the following, Astronomers have long suspected there is a connection between Saturn's outer moon Phoebe and the dark material on Iapetus, and this new ring provides compelling evidence of that relationship. Another interesting discovery in regards to Saturn is that of its giant hurricane. Going back on the 29th of April 2013, NASA's Cassini spacecraft was able to get close to the planet's atmosphere. 
The raw images which were later developed showed complex structures and a dark, swirling storm-like appearance, which NASA has called a giant hurricane. The Cassini spacecraft plunged with approximately 1,900 miles from the top of Saturn's clouds, and within 200 miles of the innermost visible edge of the rings during its expedition. NASA officials reported that as Cassini scientists and engineers did not know what to expect from the GAMP, although it seemed clear the unknown dust and debris could have been harmful. The spacecraft was rotated to operate its 13 feet wide antenna as a shield while diving, and it was collecting data during that time. NASA officials tagged it our closest look ever at the atmosphere of Saturn and the giant hurricane. In high resolution images and videos, Scientists saw that just the eye of the hurricane is estimated to stretch up to 1,250 miles approximately 2,000 kilometers wide, which is 20 times larger than the average hurricane on Earth. Thin bright clouds at the outer edge of the hurricane travel 330 miles per hour, 150 meters per second. The hurricane also swells within a large mysterious six-sided pattern that many have likened to a hexagon. One of the Cassini Imaging Team scientists, Professor Andrew Igasol at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, said they had to do a double take when they first saw this vortex because it highly resembles a hurricane on Earth. But this hurricane is of a much larger scale than any we've seen here on Earth, and the interesting fact is that it's somehow getting on by the little amount of water vapor in Saturn's hydrogen atmosphere, because both water vapor and lower atmospheric turbulence make hurricanes more powerful and Saturn, just like any other gas giant, has a deep hydrogen atmosphere with little water vapour in it, yet it's still able to conjure such a massive wind. Scientists aren't exactly sure when the massive hurricane formed, but they believe it could be a permanent weather feature. Similar hurricane-like storms have been observed in other gas giants in our solar system, but what puzzled scientists is why wind speeds increase as we move further out in the solar system. The Cassini team have said that Saturn has given them a unique opportunity to study hurricanes, and how they act on different planets. In fact, Saturn's massive hurricane might help us to gain better insights into hurricanes on Earth. Unlike the hurricanes that we have on Earth which are affected by different factors that make them unstable, this newly discovered Saturn hurricane is not affected by such factors. It does not encounter land or ocean boundaries and is stationary at its North Pole allowing researchers to simply focus on the physics that govern hurricanes. Something researchers are intrigued by is Saturn's moon Enceladus. It's been put forward that this moon may be able to support life. This claim comes after researchers found that its ocean is over 1 billion years old, further saying this is a sweet spot. NASA reported at the 2019 Astrobiology Science Conference that the time frame is long enough there to be life. One of the research scientists said the following, In the scenario that best matches the real moons, the ocean of Enceladus is around a billion years old. That's good news for life. It should have had enough time to arise, and there still should be some energy to power it. The Cassini spacecraft made 127 flybys of Titan, and 23 flybys of Enceladus. The Cassini mission ended on the 15th of September 2017, and this was due to loss of contact. After making these flybys though, Cassini gave researchers an incredible insight into how the moon is doing. It's not just the airless icy body as it was previously assumed. The detection of the thermal infrared and the four tiger strike fractures means that Enceladus heats up from the inside out. It's believed the friction caused by the gravitational forces of Saturn has been affecting the heating of Enceladus. On our planet, hydrothermal vents are filled with organisms we can't see anywhere else, with scientists saying there's whole new worlds in these vents that many of us have never seen before. This could be what's happening on Enceladus. Researchers have said there is evidence of hydrothermal vents on the seafloor of Enceladus. Hydrothermal vents usually form at locations where magma and seawater meet. Water runs down the cracks right into the core, where it's heated and then comes back out again. Just like Europa, Enceladus is also believed to have a global ocean found under its icy surface. 
All of the data collected related to Enceladus points out to the fact that it really does have the three ingredients required for life. It seems that scientists are one step closer to finding life in our very own solar system. Our solar system is tiny when compared to the rest of the universe, and it makes you wonder what else could be out there. We've managed to accomplish a lot in a relatively short amount of time. We've already sent humans to live in space, and to venture on the moon. We've developed massive and very sophisticated telescopes that have been able to reach some of the most remote places in space. Many organisations have decided to take it a step further. The European Space Agency, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence and NASA, have been working very hard to find out if we're completely alone. Today we have a big number of projects that are made to scan the stars for signs of intelligent life. Despite our efforts, scientists have said we've yet to make contact, and we still have no idea what could be out there. Many will agree that Bigfoot is the most famous of all the cryptids. This mysterious giant humanoid has been in the mainstream media for the last few decades, and although science is firm on their belief that the creature is a hoax, Many interesting reports have surfaced over the years. These creatures always follow a similar theme, looking like a giant ape-like human and being very tall. Depending on who you talk to depends on the creature's height, but most can agree that Bigfoot's average height is between 7 and 10 feet tall. At the height of the Bigfoot craze, various expeditions were put together by various companies from across the world. It was almost like a battle of who could capture the best Bigfoot evidence first. Kind of similar to the space race, but instead of landing on the moon this involved a mythical creature that had allegedly been witnessed for thousands of years. All over the planet people have been reporting these creatures, with some finding some giant footprints, to a few being able to photograph the creature. The most interesting stories though comes from those people who have had first hand experience with the creature. One of the issues people have though is that the large majority of these stories have no evidence, but every so often a story will be told that has evidence to back it up. In the last few days these fascinating images have been making the rounds online. I was able to speak to the person who captured the images, and he's allowed me to share his story. Mr Yeoman said the following about the event. Here's the story with my photos. My wife and I bought 11 acres of land in Bailey, Colorado. We built a foundation of cylinder block that is 6 feet above the ground. The land is mostly hard packed dirt and large rock, which I shared a video of when we bought it. After we moved a modular home there we lived off and on there for 2 years. This was while we got ready for permanent residency. In August 2017, we were finishing off the interior of the back of the house and I came into the living room and caught a whiff of a very harsh odour in the room. It smelled like rotting animal flesh, vomit and excrement. I caught a glimpse of something moving outside the window from the corner of my eye. We have had bears visit pretty regular, but they tried to get under the house not in it. But when I saw the figure by the window I thought it was a bear, and that it had somehow climbed up the window. I take a lot of wildlife pictures because they literally come up to the outside of it. This includes animals such as mule deer, elk and bears. However, I haven't seen any mountain lion and other small game. I've quite a few cars all over my property but they aren't mine, but they hang out there a lot. Going back to the creature I saw at the top of the head and it caught my attention. It moved closer and I could see that its eyes were huge. This scared me because bear eyes aren't that large or far apart. I always have a camera handy to get a good shot of the elk when they come close to the house. When I realised it wasn't a bear, fear struck me. I used a cheap Kodak sport digital camera for taking pictures, and for the most part it takes fast action pictures and videos. It was on the end of the table next to my recliner approximately 6 feet from the window. When I pointed it at the window, it stopped swaying and closed its eyes as if it was a child. It reminded me of when children do that thing, you can't see me if my eyes are closed. I was shaking a lot and trying to video at the same time. I moved back a step and it slowly moved from one side of the window to the other. It was seriously around a 10 minute video, 
but it was on a small card which had to be downloaded onto my computer. It didn't make any attempt to enter the house or run away. Around 8 minutes in, my wife came into the room and asked what I was doing. I told her there's something outside and it wasn't no bear. When she looked over my shoulder, she screamed what is that thing, and ran back into the bedroom. I stopped the video, went to the closet and grabbed my 40 cal off the shelf. When I turned back around, it was moving away from the window. I wasn't going to shoot at it unless it tried to get in, which it didn't do. I went to my wife who was freaking out and tried to answer her bombardment of questions and tried to reassure her that everything was okay. She called the sheriff's department and they sent three deputies to check out the property. Their conclusion was that it was most likely a bear or other wildlife. This was however until I showed them the playback. When they reviewed it, two of the three were impressed and the third just said it was a bear. The rest of the night was uneventful and peaceful other than my wife panicking. She ended up having my daughter and her husband come and get her, and they took her to Golden for a couple of days. I downloaded this video onto my computer at my mother's house. This was because she had internet access and I didn't. Long story short, my mother's house burnt down in a fire we had out there last year. We have seen it at a distance every now and then in the darkness by the firelight. Not the body but the eye shine, and that's pretty creepy too. But I haven't had any instance of a destructive nature. So I decided just to be cautious when I'm walking my property. I do carry my 40 cal always outside. This is just in case but I haven't had to pull it from my holster. I see signs where he's broke branches on trees that I can't reach on a 6 foot ladder and occasionally he'll move things around. Most signs we see were after we left and came back home. There's the story behind the photos. I hope people can find something in there to benefit them if they're dealing with one too. These pictures were taken from the video to show the best shots because I was shaking like hell. Many people came forward and said that they believe what Mr. Yeoman saw, and even told of similar encounters. Many people on Bigfoot forums have said that they are by far the best Bigfoot photographs they have seen, and that they believe his story to be genuine. It doesn't sound like he's trying to convince anyone about what happened, but rather just putting his encounter out there for others to hear. There are many areas stretching across North America that are often referred to as being hotspots for seeing a Bigfoot. These locations have been named by the Bigfoot community, and every year people have come forward with their own sightings of the creature. According to many Bigfoot experts, these concentrated areas get the highest amount of reports of a Sasquatch creature, and can span over the course of several years with reoccurring sightings of the creature. Interestingly, researchers have said that these creatures don't just go by the name of Bigfoot, and there's actually different species of these large humanoids that roam our planet. One of them goes by the name of the Grassman, and these creatures are usually seen close to Ohio. Often encountered in the woods of this region is that of a cryptid that's commonly been referred to by the locals as the Grassman Monster. The Grassman Monster, also known as the Orange Eyes, is a massively large and hairy man-like creature that many have compared to that of Sasquatch sightings. Unlike many of the other Bigfoot sightings all across the world, it appears that the Grassman cryptid is far more dangerous and has a number of strange behaviours that make it unique to all other Sasquatch creatures. Many that have claimed to have stumbled across the beast while hiking through the forest claim the Grassman is capable of constructing small huts and areas for living, a unique behaviour that has never been reported surrounding that of the Sasquatch species. It's because of this strange behaviour that many report the creature is not that of a Sasquatch, and of a different cryptid entirely. The first well reported sighting of the Grassman monster happened back in 1978. This was when several kids ran into their home and alerted their grandparents that a hairy man was digging through a rubbish pit. When the grandparents went to investigate what was being claimed, they saw the large grass man as he was digging through rubbish looking for food. However, the large creature soon ran away after being spotted by the adults. As research continued in the area surrounding that of the grass man, people began to report spotting a large ape-like creature living in huts made of tall grass only to come back to the site later to find it completely abandoned, 
with the creature moving to new areas after being spotted. One person said the following about the photographs. These photos look exactly like what I saw while camping with my friends. When I first looked at the photographs it sent shivers down my spine. The resemblance to the creature I saw is uncanny. I immediately showed my friends this photograph and they began to freak out. Our encounter happened back in 2017 while camping in Pennsylvania. We planned to stay for a day or two as we hadn't seen each other for a while. We set up camp and started to get a fire going. While it was getting dark we started to talk about more out there topics and this led on to us each giving details about the mysterious things we'd seen during our lives. I hadn't seen anything strange myself but my friends had experienced some weird stuff during their lives. While one of my friends was halfway through their story we could hear these strange noises coming from the woods. If I had to describe I would say it sounded like a low grunting sound. I told the group that it was most likely some type of wildlife. This noise continued but we wasn't worried as it sounded like it was quite far away. Around 15 minutes later after those noises started they completely stopped. However after a few minutes a loud screech could be heard coming from behind our camp. This noise was really loud and it made us all jump. I'd never heard anything like this before and judging by my friends faces neither had they. We all froze in place hoping that whatever had just made those noises wouldn't do it again. We could hear some noises coming from behind the woods, so one of my friends grabbed their torch and shined it in the direction of the noises. This was when we got a sight of the creature making the loud noises, and it was something that none of us had seen before. The only way I can describe it is that it looked like a giant hairy ape-like human. After we shone the light in the direction of the humanoid it soon ran off. After this we all jumped in the car leaving behind the majority of our belongings. Whatever we'd encountered left a mark on all of us. This wasn't something we were laughing about. It had a lasting effect on all of us, to the point where I didn't want to leave the house for several months. I was genuinely scared by whatever this creature was. I still have its image in my mind. I don't think it's something that I'm going to forget anytime soon. As of right now I've never seen anything similar. This is because I won't venture near any woodland areas. I think that these creatures do exist, and I'm the first to admit that before my sighting I never believed they existed. I thought they were made up by people, but now I've seen one with my own eyes it's completely changed my view on them. I have no idea why it didn't attack us as this thing was massive. If I had to guess I would say it was easily over 7 feet in height. It possessed a very wide frame and had long brown hair. As of today I think that what I witnessed was a Bigfoot. Police stories are often very interesting. This is mainly because they get into situations that many of us don't. However, what happens when a police sergeant encounters something they can't explain? This is what happened to an unnamed off-duty police sergeant that was driving along a road near Silbury Hill. Going back in 2009, the officer was travelling close to Silbury Hill when something caught his attention. The officer in question wasn't someone who believed in out there topics and would use logic to explain events. However, even this was hard for him to believe. On the right hand side was a large crop field and in the middle he could see three large beings. Thinking it could have been trespassers or people up to no good, he decided to get out of his car and investigate what was going on. However, as he approached the field he soon realised these large beings were unlike anything he had seen before. The officer reported he was a few metres away from the beings and could make out a lot of detail. At first they didn't notice him approaching them as they were crouched on the ground inspecting something. He couldn't see what they were looking at but whatever it was it caught their attention as they were studying the ground for several minutes. Interestingly after stepping closer to the beings, the officer could see they were inspecting a crop circle. Interestingly, crop circles around Silbury have been quite common in recent years, and a recent study showed that the majority of reported crop circles do come from England. There are those that believe crop circles are made by extraterrestrials, while others believe they're created by humans with boards. Interestingly, private researchers have done their own studies on these formations, 
and have found some interesting consistencies with various crop circles. Various anomalies have been discovered in alleged genuine crop circles, as compared to those made by humans. These anomalies were not the same as those that people had made, and couldn't be replicated with a bond. One such anomaly is that the crops themselves that have allegedly not been made by humans look different to those that have. The human-made crop circles have bent crops, and this is due to the force that is applied to create them. The other crop circles, however, were not bent, but instead appear to be softened, with one researcher saying it appeared as if some energy had passed through the crop and made it limp. Other studies have been carried out which include that of soil samples being taken, and in some instances there was much higher levels of radiation. These studies were carried out by independent sources and funded by those said people. Interestingly, residents saw a craft land in a crop circle several decades ago, and this was close to Rendlesham Forest. Once again, soil samples had been taken and there was an obvious sign that something had left behind a large amount of radiation in the surrounding area. Interestingly, this craft had been seen a few years before the famous Rendlesham Forest incident. The Rendlesham Forest incident happened back in December of 1980. There was a series of reports made by credible witnesses that detailed the event of an unidentified flying object that had reportedly landed in the forest, and was at the centre of a number of unexplainable phenomena throughout the area. At around 3am on the 26th of December, a security patrol at the Royal Air Force Base Woodridge saw what they described as bright lights descending nearby the Rendlesham Forest. The security patrol described the lights as being that of a downed aircraft and so quickly rushed to investigate their sighting, working to follow its general direction in the forest. Once they arrived within the sight of the aircraft, the men took notice of the fact that the animals nearby native to that region of the forest appeared to be screeching and going into a panic frenzy. The men described what they saw as a glowing object, metallic in appearance surrounded with attached and brightly coloured lights. One of the members of the security patrol, Sergeant Jim Penniston later wrote in his memo that the team had encountered a craft of unknown origin, which only helped to confirm the sighting of an unidentified flying object. Going back to the officer's encounter, he could see that the beings observing the crop circles were wearing white clothes, or white overalls. He could tell the beings were tall and estimated they were between 7 and 9 foot, and had blonde hair. As he approached closer, he started to hear what he said was a low static sound. This surprised him as he didn't know what was going on, and shortly after this noise started, the whole field started to vibrate and make the same noise. After this, the tall beings noticed the officer, and he then said he ran out of the field as fast as he could. Interestingly, an out there theory that has been put forward is that the beings were somehow able to put a shield of some sorts around the crop field so if anyone got close to them or entered the field, the beings would know about it, almost acting like some kind of advanced alarm system. After driving home, the event would play on the officer's mind. He then decided to contact paranormal investigators in the hopes they would be able to get to the bottom of what happened. It was then reported by locals that this site was a hotspot for unidentified flying objects, and it was almost as if these objects were observing what was happening around the crop circle. After the researchers couldn't give much information on what he'd experienced, he decided to finally approach the Wiltshire Police Station and tell them about what happened. However, they said they couldn't help and didn't want to comment on the matter, further saying it was a personal matter because the sergeant was off duty at the time of the incident. The paranormal experts did say they believed what the sergeant saw, and that his story was very consistent. What's interesting about this is the connections some have made to Stonehenge. Silbury Hill is only around 20 miles from Stonehenge, and as many are aware, some of the UFO community believe that the ancient structure was built by an advanced civilization. Stonehenge has proven to be quite a mystery to anyone who even attempts to try to understand its construction, and the techniques behind it. Not only are the large blocks used too massive that even modern means of construction would fail in regards to establishing the structure, but the source of the blocks appears to have been carved from hundreds of miles away, which leads many researchers to question the ability of transporting such large stones to the area. 
To add to this bizarre strangeness of the formation of Stonehenge, it's been discovered that the structure appears to have been built with astonishing precision in its placement and carved creation. Up to this point though, we don't have any solid proof this event happened, and we have to go by what the officer said. Interestingly, it seems that other police officers have had run-ins with equally bizarre beings. Definitely seen as one of the most comical cryptids to have ever been reported is that of the Loveland Frogman. The Loveland Frogman is a cryptid that has only been reported around that of the town of Loveland located in the state of Ohio. According to witness reports, the Loveland Frogman is that of a large humanoid frog that stands about 4 feet tall, and is capable of running as a biped. The creature was believed to have been first witnessed back in 1955, with two other frog-like men described as having leathery skin, webbed hands and webbed feet. Though the legends of the Frogman would eventually die shortly after this sighting, with scattered reports coming in over the years being completely disregarded, this would change in 1972 when the Loveland Police Department would come face to face with a startling creature. According to the Loveland Police Department, police officers spotted a strange creature running across the road that fits the description of the Loveland Frogman. After following the creature, they began to realize it was not a hoax and soon opened fire on the creature. However, it is said the officers missed and the creature was able to escape down an embankment. The officers did get a good look at the creature, and described it as a large iguana-like animal that was missing its tail, standing four feet tall and running on its hind legs. After this encounter, renewed interest in the creature would begin to surge back into popularity, with many others coming forward with their story of their encounters with the strange creature over the years. This would even lead to a musical being made titled Hot Damn It's the Loveland Frog back in 2014 making fun of the sightings and reaction to the Loveland Frogman. In August of 2016, this hilarity would quickly turn into horror after a group of teenagers journeyed all over Loveland while playing the popular mobile game known as Pokemon Go. During their time journeying near Lake Isabella, they claimed to have seen a creature that was similar to a giant frog that began to stand on its hind legs and stare at them. This would lead the teens to run in fear as they believed the creature would soon begin to attack as it came closer. Encounters with paranormal entities have been reported for decades. What makes these reports interesting is the fact they go beyond just stories, having many people come forward with their encounters, and even struggling to explain what it was they encountered. The most common of these entities is said to be that of ghosts and other paranormal beings. These have been reported for years by various people all across the world. However, equally confusing is the high number of mysterious people cases that have been reported in recent years. It may sound far-fetched, but there are some out there that believe humans have the ability to take on supernatural traits, and sometimes these individuals are referred to as witches. All over the planet you can find cases of witches. In recent years however, it's known that the majority of these cases were massively overlooked, and the people being accused of these actions were in fact just regular people. The sad truth is many lost their lives over these claims, with some having to move locations in fear of being caught and meeting a similar demise. With that being said, there are some that do believe certain people possess supernatural powers, and that every so often these individuals make themselves known. Back in the early 1990s, there appeared to be strange rumours spreading all across India that spoke of a witch walking through the streets after midnight, speaking in the voice of their target's mother as it would knock on the front door of their target's house in an attempt to get in. The rumours came to be known as that of the Witch of Bangalore, as it was believed to have focused the majority of its time around the air of Bangalore and was the centre of the majority of its sightings. This led to many people being scared to open the front door to their houses if they heard their mother calling their name, regardless of the time of day. It was not until one genius Indian child came up with a brilliant solution to prevent the witch from targeting anyone else in the future. The child claimed that if people wrote the words nail bar on the front door, a phrase that translates to come back tomorrow then the witch would be forced to return the next night only to see the sign again and repeat the cycle. 
This led to a wide number of people writing the phrase on their front door, leading to the continued urban legend to this day, and the reason why the phrase might appear on the doors of residential zones all throughout Bangalore. Interestingly, another case would begin to make the rounds back in 2006, and it detailed that a group of unknown objects were being seen in Mexico. The Mexican press were one of the first places to report the mysterious event, with several people then coming forward to comment on the matter. Interestingly, these objects that were being seen were being described by some as a UFO, but there was a large majority that said that although the objects were floating, the identity of them was more human-like. These unidentified flying objects were then said to have been witnessed by some locals before the main event happened, and that even then they had no idea what they were looking at. The main footage and images comes from a group called Ovneon Club de Nivoleon, which translates to the UFO Club. This club is said to be one of the largest UFO groups in Mexico, and one that over the years has investigated and reported multiple claims. However, these mysterious beings or crafts would be one of the strangers they'd come across. Described as looking like a large humanoid, the objects in the footage could be seen flying close to the nearby mountains. The witches of Monterey then started to spread throughout the region, and residents even came forward with alleged encounters with the witches. One of the local residents described their encounter with a strange woman. They said that at the time they were walking home with a friend, then suddenly a woman seemed to have appeared out of nowhere, and asked where they were going. As the girl replied saying they were heading home, the woman just stared blankly at them. Immediately the girl thought to herself that something seemed off about the woman, and so continued her journey. After looking behind a few seconds later, they noticed the woman who they'd just been speaking to had vanished. However, when they got to the end of the street, the strange woman once again came into sight. However, this time she managed to somehow get in front of them. She was seen under a nightlight staring at the girls. At this point they got worried and soon ran home. The girl said she hasn't encountered or seen the woman since, and said she was glad she decided to run the rest of the way home. Another interesting account of these beings comes from that of a police officer. The story goes that a Mexican police officer was on patrol in his car when he encountered a mysterious being. At around 3 in the morning, he turned into a street that was on his normal route. However, on this occasion something wasn't right. In the distance he could see what appeared to be a large black object falling from a tree. Thinking it may have been a resident or someone that needed assistance, he decided it would be best to go and investigate. However, as he started to approach the object, he could see that it hadn't actually hit the ground, and whatever it was was somehow hovering around a foot above the ground. As the officer approached the levitating object in his car, it then slowly started to descend. When it touched the floor, the officer shouted to whatever it was to turn around. After getting no response from the individual, he put his four beams on. This caused the creature to become wild. It started to cover his face, but at this point the officer was able to give a good description of the individual. He said that it was a woman with pale skin and that possessed two large round black eyes. He said that looking into the eyes made him feel nervous, and that he didn't like being around whatever it was. After observing it for around a minute, the entity then leapt onto the hood of the car and started going crazy. The officer noted that whatever it was, it tried really hard to get to him, and that he tried his best to stay away from it. He was also able to describe the clothing of the individual, saying that it was wearing a black cloak and that it reminded him of a witch. At this point, he made it a priority to get out of there and call for backup. Interestingly, as he reached the end of the street, he started to feel lightheaded, and then before he knew it, he lost consciousness. He was discovered by fellow officers and it turned out he wasn't hurt, but his team members noted that he was in a bad way, and that something serious must have happened for him to be put in this situation. When he started to come around, all of his workers were interested as to what happened that night, and as you can imagine, he was hesitant about telling people as he thought he would be mocked. When the other officers did eventually hear about what had happened, they were doubtful. 
The officer in question was then asked to undergo several tests in order to make sure that nothing was in his system. He was happy to do this and all the tests were negative. The next thing he was asked to do is submit himself for a psychiatric evaluation. At this point he felt like no one believed what he had seen, but he knew he had to do this if anyone was going to believe him. Once again though, the test came back fine. The police officer's story then gained further credibility when residents started to come forward with their own encounters, and that on the night of his sightings, others reported seeing a strange woman hovering in the area. But as soon as they tried to record the being, she managed to vanish. Going back to the witches that are allegedly seen in the sky, although there are some individuals that hold the idea that what was seen that day was in fact a witch, there seems to be an even larger amount of people that suggest that what was seen that day was actually a UFO. One of the most interesting things about the event is that the object in question was seen really low to the ground. This is something that's not usually seen when it comes to an unidentified flying object. A large group of people were able to witness and photograph the encounter. This adds credibility to the event, and that something actually happened on that day. One of the main issues is trying to figure out what the local residents were seeing. Theories have ranged from an unidentified flying object, to military technology a witch and even a hoax. Interestingly, some researchers who were able to sit down and view the footage and images said it was interesting. One of the things they picked up on is how the objects reacted to the wind. They suggested that if this was edited it would have been a lot more smooth, whereas these objects seem to have moved with the wind, something you'd expect to see if it was actually there. As with these types of sightings though, not everyone is entirely won over. In fact, some have offered some other ideas as to what the objects could be. One person suggested the objects weren't witches and were in fact balloons. The video was a prank, with balloons being tied to a plastic bag and then released. When the wind picked up the objects, it gave the effect that it was a UFO. However, many have said if this was the case, there's not enough balloons tied to the bag to cause this effect, and balloons in wind are much more erratic. Eyewitnesses said that whatever it was was moving smoothly across the skyline. There are millions of species on our planet, and researchers have done a great job at discovering them. However, scientists have said there's hundreds of thousands of undiscovered animal species, and that every year we discover almost 2,000 new species. One interesting way that mysterious creatures make the news is by eyewitness reports. But what's more interesting is when these creatures are captured on camera. This is what happened with one creature whose identity is not known. This photograph has been making the rounds on social media for years, and interestingly, its original story is not known. In fact, it's not known where the original photograph comes from. Perhaps the most well-known story attached to the photograph is that the feet of this animal belongs to a cryptid. Most suggest that it looks like the feet of the mysterious Dogman, a dog-like humanoid that's been reported in several parts of the world for the last few decades. Interestingly, many have come forward with their reports, and when coming through each one, they're very similar in nature, making some suggest that what people are seeing is the same creature, and that it somehow managed to survive in various regions across our planet. The image went viral in 2018, with many people sharing it on Facebook and claiming that it was captured on a trail camera in Alabama. The story goes that the property owner kept hearing mysterious noises on their property late at night, and that whatever creature was making them, it didn't sound like any local wildlife. The man forgot about the noises until two days later, when he heard one of his goats make a loud pitch screaming noise. It caused the man to run out of his house and attempt to find the goat. However, his animal was nowhere to be seen. While walking around his property, he could see that the large paw prints littered the area where his goats were kept, and he knew that whatever it was was just trying to get a quick meal. He wasn't able to move the goats as they were out in the open. The story then goes that everything went quiet for a few nights, before the same goat noises were heard again. Recognising the noises, the man once again ran outside to try and catch whatever was causing harm to his animals. 
However, same as before, he was too late, and whatever it was had escaped with another one of his goons. It's reported that this happened five times before the man had enough. He decided to invest in a trail camera and try and catch whatever this creature was. Same as before, when he inspected the area where his goats were, he could see large footprints. After installing the camera and waiting for a few nights, the same event played out with one of the goats being taken. The difference this time though was that the trail camera had managed to capture something. When looking through, it said that he was baffled as to what he was looking at. When posted online, many people put forward their theories, with one person saying it was identical to what they had seen on their property, and that they think it's the mysterious chupacabra, an animal known for taking down smaller animals and draining them of blood. Others suggested that the feet were more humanoid, and that what he's actually captured on camera was that of the dogman. However, some said this story isn't true, and what the photo actually shows is a mysterious creature that was captured back in 2015. With that being said, the story is still similar, except it details a woman setting up a trail camera because a mysterious creature kept coming onto her property. Researchers have come forward and said they haven't been able to identify the original source of the photograph, and claim that every couple of years or so it makes the rounds on social media. Some who've seen it though are convinced it's one of the clearest photographs yet of the Dogman. For those unaware, all across North America are reports and tales of a creature that's become known as the Dogman. It's been described as looking like a strange werewolf-like creature, and seems to possess supernatural strength and abilities. Some eyewitnesses have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast and at the centre of Skinwalker legends. Interestingly, for the last 60 years there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales the majority of the stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first Dogman sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene, not wanting to stay and risk getting hurt by the large creature. Fast forward to 1961 and the security guard witnessed something similar in Big Rapids, Michigan. Most of the encounters with these creatures are just stories, and there's no way to back up what the individual saw. However, the security guard remembered that he had a camera on him and was in fact able to snap a photograph of the large beast. Those who've analysed it say it matches other eyewitness descriptions of the Dogman. Although the majority of the Dogman sightings are from Michigan, there have been some outside of this area that have come forward with similar experiences. One of these occurred in California. One of the strangest reported encounters of the Dogman creature comes from that of a report made in Sacramento, California. According to the reporter, the story circles around that of a woman who claimed to have encountered the Dogman creature near the city of Sacramento back in 1953. The sighting is believed to have taken place roughly 1,000 feet west of the American River, a short 2,000 feet east of the state capital on a small house owned by a small family in the region. According to the woman, she had this sighting when she was roughly 12 years old as she was watching television and laying down on the couch. As she was laying there, she claimed to have noticed a large mass moving in the window as if someone was watching into the home. She quickly got up and went to the window to see a large face of a dog that seemed to be staring into the room. She claimed that the head of the dog looked very large, much larger than that of a coyote or normal dog of any kind, and it had a long straight snout too dark to see what colour it could have been, but was believed to be a dark grey with glowing red eyes. She ran from the window when she noticed the creature began to stand on its hind legs, and that it was standing five feet above the ground. She screamed for her parents to come, which scared the dogman away before anything else could occur. They quickly went outside and claimed that nothing was nearby, and that the window was far too tall for a dog to be standing up and looking into. Unfortunately, nothing more could be gathered from the report, 
as the woman was unsure of the exact time of day the event had occurred. When reported, most of these encounters are just brushed aside, and officials say that what people are seeing is just stray dogs. However, the eyewitnesses have said that what they encounter wasn't any ordinary dog. It's interesting to note that Navajo Native Americans have been talking about these creatures for years. Though they're known as the Dogman, they also go by the name of Skinwalkers. They follow a similar description, looking like a human but having werewolf-like features. The Navajo describe them as possessing superhuman strength, being able to move fast and having the ability to easily take down a human. According to the stories, the Skinwalkers were most frequently seen as foxes, coyotes, wolves, crows, eagles or owls. Some stories even tell of Skinwalkers attacking people by appearing as a relative or an acquaintance. The ability of the Skinwalkers depend on who you ask, but most say they're able to possess the bodies of their prey by looking into their eyes. This way they're able to control the actions of people. Although many have come forward with their reports over the years, as of right now, the mysterious dog man remains a mystery until more evidence can be gathered. Others have suggested that what this photograph shows is that of a lobbyman, or as it's more commonly known, the South American werewolf. These creatures are often seen by locals during the night, and they say they stand over six foot tall and are usually seen in forested areas. Some have speculated that the creature could be a dog with some kind of disease. Regardless of the theories, it seems that this photograph isn't going to get explained anytime soon. Over the last few decades, an endless amount of space discoveries have been made, reshaping how we understand the universe. Experts have studied the cosmos, and have managed to unravel some of the biggest mysteries. Many other equally spectacular discoveries, however, have not captured the public's attention. One of these that many may not be aware of is that of the Sri Lankan meteorite fossils. Discovering the fossil remains of extraterrestrial life in a meteorite would bring a new era in the astronomical study, as it would suggest there is life existing somewhere else in space. On the 29th of December 2012, a meteorite that was giving off bright green flames was seen hitting the ground in Sri Lanka. Researchers from the United Kingdom and US were able to get their hands on some pieces of the structure and study the site in which the meteorite hit. The scientists said in their papers that several images from the structure showed fossilized biological structures and that they were highly carbonaceous. In January, the team also published another paper claiming that fossils of organisms that were similar to diatoms were discovered in the meteorite. Scientists from the Center of Astrobiology in the Cardiff University reported that electron microscope images of the rock revealed tiny fossilized algae forms. In a paper published in the Journal of Cosmology, March 2013 edition, the scientists in their description of the fragments said that an inspection of the images depicted the presence of some biological structures that were highly carbonaceous, with some being integrated deeply in the rock's mineral matrix showing that there's no possibility of them resulting from recent biological contamination. After testing the fragments' nitrogen content in the oxygen isotope analysis, they concluded that the rock originated from deep in space and not from Earth, and suggested it could have even been a comet. So the question here is why didn't this discovery make the news? This discovery in itself would prove we're not alone in the universe, an early criticism of these findings proposed the possibility of the rock being merely terrestrial based, and was probably struck by lightning resulting in structural alterations. Another point of criticism was that the contamination of the rock after hitting the Sri Lankan grounds. Phil Platon astronomer and critic commented that he was dubious of the reports about the meteorite containing fossil remains. He says that when the previous scientists' works are critically analysed, it could be found that they didn't do enough tests that were critically needed in establishing the accuracy of their conclusions. Plate argues that the scientists did not determine whether the meteorite was indeed real, and neither did they consider the possibility of contamination. Plate consulted Patrick Koldig, a professor of evolutionary biology at the University of Colorado in Boulder, 
who discovered that the origin of the extraterrestrial datums could have undergone similar evolutionary events as here on planet Earth, and made the conclusion that the samples was in fact a contamination. These are just theories however and there are those that believe this life form did come from space, with one person criticising their statement and saying the following. Even when we discover evidence of life in asteroids we're not open minded, it seems that the scientific community is also trying to debunk it straight away, instead of being open minded, and in this case going as far as disrespecting other scientists work. Another interesting discovery is that of the Cheraklo asteroid, and this is because of its ring. Photos taken from the Cassini and Voyager spacecrafts have shown the glory of Saturn's magnificent rings. Despite Saturn being undisputedly the planet best known for its rings, planets like Neptune, Uranus and Jupiter also have their own rings. The understanding of the formation of these rings and how they're maintained is still elusive. They could be ancient and most likely formed as a result of dust and ice in the planetary disk of the solar system, or recent additions from objects debris disrupted by impacts when they went too close to the ring planets. Some rings are maintained by the gravity of moons close by, while others are just on their own. There is one more body to be included in this list, and it's not a planet, but rather it's the first asteroid that's been discovered that has rings. With a diameter of approximately 153 miles, 10199 Cheraklo is the biggest known space body that orbits mostly between Saturn and Neptune. While most of these objects have characteristics common to asteroids and comets, Cheraklo depicts more of an asteroid characteristics. There is a possibility that it orbited beyond Neptune more than 10 million years ago, and got scattered to its current location after an encounter with the outer planets. On the 3rd of June 2013, scientists predicted this asteroid's occultation of a bright star to be viewed from South America. Astronomers observed from various sites as the asteroid crossed in the star's front. While the asteroid was travelling it blocked light from the star, and the scientists observed an additional event. A slight dimming of light some seconds before and after the main event, implying there was something else that blocked the light which indicated that something circled the asteroid. After observing data that was obtained from seven different points of observation, the team identified the ring's shape, orientation and size. The system contained a ring that was four miles wide close to the planet, and another smaller ring that was two miles wide further out. Braga Rebus, a researcher, commented that from the asteroid surface, there could be two magnificent, sharp and very bright rings across the sky, noticeably close as they are around a thousandth of the distance of the moon from Earth. He continued to say that from the ground the bigger ring would block the outer ring's view. The rings and Saturn's rings have a similarity in density, brightness and formation from ice, water and rock, but differ in scale. According to researchers, the whole Cheraklo system would fit the Cassini division around 12 times. This is referring to the largest gap in Saturn's rings. Researchers have noticed the particles circling around the asteroid are travelling at a much slower rate when compared to Saturn's rings. Astronomers use seven telescopes with a majority set in South America, among them only the European Southern Observatory's Danish 1.5 telescope in Chile recorded the small gaps between the rings. According to scientists working on the project, this was possible because they use a fast sensitive camera that could get an image sequence at around 10 images per second similar to a video. Both rings' stellar constellation lasted a total of 0.6 seconds, so the camera was able to make a detailed observation. The other telescope's exposed time was more than 0.7 seconds, so they could only capture a single gap in the light. Cheraklo is the largest among the outer solar system bodies, with crossing orbits which are altered by outer planets. Another space discovery that's fascinated researchers is that of the Baby Boom Galaxy. Astronomers studying the universe have discovered possibly history's most productive galaxy in star formation. The researchers have said there are galaxy clusters that were born only a few billion years after the universe was created, making them some of the oldest formations the universe has to offer. Also referred to as HFLS3, 
the not very new galaxy produces approximately 3,000 new stars every year, which is over 2,000 times more than the average Milky Way, and around 29 times greater than the amount of stars currently formed by similar galaxies. A great starburst galaxy happened only after the Big Bang, which resulted in the formation of this universe around 14 billion years in the past, making this galaxy most far away from the pure starburst galaxy, which is still there to date blazing through their dust and gas reserves to quickly form stars. The Baby Boom galaxy is however around 20 times bigger, producing stars at a rate of 20 times faster than normal galaxies. The Baby Boom galaxy is the brightest of the starburst galaxies in the very far away universe, and belongs to the starburst galaxy class defining its rate of forming stars. After its discovery and characterization by different wavelength telescopes, its appearance was that of an inconspicuous smudge because of the far distance. The galaxy stood out as the brightest after observations from telescopes at wavelength ranges of infrared and submillimeter. This is as a result of the many young stars. After their formation, the stars produce a lot of UV light and dust, which absorbs the light emitting it at these particular wavelengths, which explains why they're visible. To further understand the Baby Boom's galaxy unique glow, a team of scientists followed the studies up with several telescopes to measure how far it is to their galaxy, and found out that it is 12.3 billion light years away. Further measurements of radio wavelengths enabled astronomers and scientists to conclude that the Baby Boom's galaxy rate of star formation is approximately 1,000 to 4,000 stars every year, a rate that will require the galaxies 50 million years to form a galaxy as big as the greatest ones that have been seen today. Peter Kapak from the Spitzer Science Center of NASA said that initially, galaxies forming stars like this had only been seen in a teenage universe but this particular galaxy formed stars while still in its childhood. The mystery is whether most of the big galaxies form stars early like the Baby Boom galaxy, or whether this one is an exception. Addressing this mystery will enable scientists to understand the degree to which the model of the hierarchy of galaxy formation is true. Co-author Nick Scoville from Caltech said the observed incredible activity of star formation suggest they may be witnessing the birth of the most enormous elliptical galaxies in the universe. Explorers and mappers of the last few hundred years have worked to find nearly every piece of land and uncharted area from around the world. Further advancements in modern technology such as satellite imaging and other innovations have also provided humans with the means to see almost every place on Earth with accurate precision. Going back a few years ago, NASA were baffled by these mysterious ice circles in the Arctic. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration has been making incredible discoveries for years, but interestingly this one wasn't made in space, but rather here on our planet. It all started when NASA sighted some of these holes in the ice. Temperatures here easily reach in the minuses. NASA had spent a decade flying over Earth's Arctic and Antarctic, trying to comprehend the association between the world's atmospheric frameworks. They think there could be a connection between Earth's Arctic, Antarctic and the mysterious holes. They were also trying to understand dangerous atmospheric conditions and how they affected our planet's surface. This mission had been named Operation Icebridge. When some NASA officials gave a report about the holes, they claimed this was the first time they'd come across them, and that they couldn't explain what they were looking at. One of the scientists that went on the operation said the holes can be seen for a few months of the year, before they suddenly disappear. The researchers knowing they had a short time of the structures made sure they took plenty of photographs. Part of the effort in solving the mystery was NASA sending it out to the public, and asking if anyone could come to a definitive answer for what the structures were and how they were created. One idea that was put forward was that of dissolving ice. Chris Schumann, a glaciologist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center had one theory, and that was that the Arctic ice is very cold, and when the warmer bodies of water come into these areas they melt the ice and cause these circular structures to form. This theory is just one of many that have been put forward, and interestingly this isn't the only discovery that's been made in the Arctic. Researchers back in 2014 came forward and said they were baffled when they visited this region. 
This was because some of the team said they could hear sounds while exploring the Arctic. They said the world's greatest chunks of ice started to sing, and this caused them to research the phenomenon. Before this, however, they were here to investigate a large crack that had appeared. To get familiar with the ice crack, which can be found in the Southern Ocean, scientists in 2014 covered many seismic sensors under the ice. It was during this experiment that the researchers were also able to answer the mystery of the singing ice. It turned out the sensors showed that the ice was vibrating, and in turn this was causing a noise to be created, something the team of scientists had never witnessed before. Wind blowing over the top of the ice shelf caused a sub-zero field to create an almost non-stop arrangement of noises. The tones are quite quiet and can't easily be heard. The equipment showed the noises were similar to that of a didgeridoo. The researchers likewise found that the reoccurrence of the vibrations changed because of changing climate conditions on the ice. When the temperatures rose or fell, for example, the noises would be different. Staying on the subject of sound, another thing that's baffled researchers is the reports by some people of the aurora borealis making sound. Interestingly, there seems to be a large amount of people who have said while observing the lights they've heard sounds. A report carried out on the aurora sound showed researchers that it was most notable around 230 feet above the ground. However, every so often these noises could be heard when lower to the ground. The report was conducted by utilising a variety of mouthpieces to record and pinpoint the noises. The report would be the first concrete evidence that would support claims that the auroras truly made sounds, and throughout all the claims that sounds from the auroras are just myths and never existed. Some weren't entirely convinced of the noises, and said that those who were hearing them may have been suffering from a fever. The report further demonstrated that during the event of the aurora borealis, individuals can hear normal aurora sounds and identify it with the colours of the auroras. On the 9th of September 2011, further research was carried out. Three amplifiers and a VLF radio wire were used during a geomagnetic storm to get 20 comparative sounds. The sounds varied in audibility. The gathered information permitted the estimation of the area and to know where the sounds were coming from. It turned out the majority of the sounds that were picked up on were in fact coming from the sky. While the research outcome helped in recognising the physical area where the sounds originated from, they don't clarify how the aurora set off the noises. It's like knowing where something come from, but not knowing why it came from there. However, there is a theory that the sun which is responsible for the display of the colourful lights is also responsible for the sound. This has not been proven scientifically. What is clear and proven beyond doubt is that the auroras make sounds. Moving away from sounds, Sigmund Levensky was born on the 15th of May 1902. Levensky served in the Russian army and got involved in the Russian Civil War. He furthered his education at the age of 23 years old in the year 1925, when he completed his education at the Naval Aviation School in which certified him as a military pilot. In 1933, Levensky became the pilot for the Chief Directorate of the Northern Sea Route. This was after leaving the all-Ukrainian pilot school where he served as the training unit leader. His first international achievement came that same year when he evacuated an American pilot who had crash-landed. Levinsky with his co-pilots formed a three-man team on the 3rd of August 1935. Their mission was to travel from Moscow to San Francisco in a single motor aircraft. Several miles into their journey, their oil tank malfunctioned and started to spill. The best decision to take at that time was to turn back, and so Levensky decided to abandon the mission. Levensky didn't abandon his motive and the next year, he and a co-pilot looked to demonstrate the probability of an air course between the US and the USSR by means of the Alaskan Bering Strait. The flight was successful and they finished an 11,800 mile multi-stage departure from Los Angeles to Moscow. This was regarded as a huge feat by Levensky and his team and he was granted with Order of the Red Banner of Labour. On the 12th of August 1937, he started a long-distance flight from Moscow to the United States via the North Pole. He encountered problems, however, when he was trying to radio contact his team. While over the Arctic, his plane's right engine failed, 
which caused the plane to go down. The Soviet government financed two aerial searches to try and find his plane. However, at the time they weren't able to find anything, and ultimately knew deep down their fate had been decided. As of today, he and the plane has vanished. It's been theorised by researchers that Levinsky and the plane is somewhere in the Arctic, or that it crashed into the water and now lives in the depths. Another interesting discovery was made by scientists and this comes from toxic fallout. The researchers said that something bad is happening as the Earth's temperature rises. What they're talking about is the radioactive fallout from nuclear meltdowns and weapon testings. After the tests were done, that wasn't the end of the tests. Fallout then found its way into the glaciers all across the world. Now, if these glaciers melt, which it seems likely they will, it could mean that it might get released back into the atmosphere and this could have massive effects. A team of scientists have been working together to try and figure out spots where the fallout might be. So far, they've managed to find nuclear fallout in the Arctic, Iceland, the Alps, British Columbia, as well as Antarctica. And as you can imagine, they're starting to get worried. It doesn't help either that researchers have said that Antarctica is melting at an alarming rate. Researchers and scientists who have been mapping and studying Antarctica have come forward and said they've been noticing some strange warming effects at our poles. This is happening at times they wouldn't expect. For example, at winter and in places like Antarctica. Recent studies have been released and suggest the planet is warming up. The scientists have said this warming in the Arctic and Antarctica have been causing many strange events. One being melting of off-winter problems including permafrost that never refroses winter and also wildlife deaths. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released the following statement. In our recent report, we stated that last year was the second warmest year on record in the Arctic, and this came with many problems. Scientists have said that regardless of what your view on global warming is, one thing that everyone should agree on is that the glaciers are melting, and this could cause devastating effects. All over the world are mysterious inscriptions and rock designs. Some of these have easily been explained by those who study them. However, there are some that have created more questions than answers, and one of these can be found in England. The Shugborough inscription is a sequence of letters, O-U-O-S-V-A-V-V. -V. These eight letters are carved in between the letters D and M, which are inscribed at a slightly lower level. These ten letters are carved into the 18th century Shepherd Monument on the grounds of Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire. The inscriptions can be found just under a mirror image of the painting by Nicholas Poussin, the Shepherds of Arcadia. There is no real explanation as to the meaning behind the inscriptions, and thus the Shugborough inscription is considered one of the most mysterious figures in the world, and remains uncrypted to this day. Several scientists and notable individuals have tried to work out the meaning of this inscription, and some of the most popular figures include the likes of Josiah Wedgwood, Charles Dickens and Charles Robert Darwin. All of them tried but failed to determine the meaning behind these mysterious inscriptions, while the mystery behind the Shugborough inscription yet remains to be solved, there has been a lot of assumptions and speculations raised by various scientists and geologists as to what the true interpretations of the mysterious inscriptions are. Some of the scientists made an attempt to interpret the inscriptions in an acrostic manner, by trying to match each letter with the first letter of the word. Others did not interpret it as such, and instead made speculations on the hidden meaning behind the inscription. The mysterious letters have caused a lot of confusion, with some researchers, scientists and historians coming forward with their own theories. Many people have come to believe that the inscription has no actual meaning, and doesn't actually stand for anything. They are of the belief that the letters were simply inscribed to deceive and fool anyone who feels there is a hidden meaning behind the wording, and mislead them into trying to solve a fake mystery but various suggestions and interpretations have thus been given to prove these people wrong, in an attempt to ascertain that there is indeed a hidden meaning behind the inscription. One suggestion is that the eight letters are coded, and this was created by George Anson to his late wife. The Mortchard Bishop in the year 1951 hypothesized that the letters could have been forged from a Latin phrase, which translates to best of wives, 
best of sisters and most devoted widower dedicates this to your virtues. Another interpretation is that the letters may represent a new Latin translation of the phrase, Vanity of vanities, save the preacher all his vanity. The letters could also represent the people that lived in Scarborough. Interestingly, some have made the connection between the letters and Oak Island in Canada. Researchers have discovered there's 2,810 letters, and Scarborough is 2,810 miles from the money pit. Another point of view is that the letters O-U-S-V are pronounced Usiv, referring to the biblical prophet Joseph. Keith Massey, a Latin and Arabic teacher, a linguistic expert also gave his insight about the inscription, and he believes that he has found a convincing solution to the mystery inscription and its true meaning. Massey believes that the letters O-U-O-S-V-A-V-V may stand for the initials of another Latin phrase, which translates to, I pray that all may follow the way to true life. Massey believes this to be an accurate interpretation of the inscription, and he advises others to stop trying to unravel any other meaning beyond this. However, as some have pointed out, it's just their theory, and it doesn't mean they're correct. As of today, the mysterious coded message remains a mystery. Another mysterious object is that of the Judicolor Rock. The Judicolor Rock is located in a field in the rural community of Canny Fork in Jackson County, and is a soapstone covered in mysterious sculptures. It entails lines, circles, and scribbles that seem to form different shapes, and these mysterious and intriguing shapes have become the source of much debate over the years. There have been questions about the exact meaning behind these shapes, and whoever it was that carved them. Several years have passed and these mysterious shapes are yet to be deciphered by anyone. Perhaps one of the most intriguing facts about this site is its long history, and the moment it was first discovered. The first engravings on the rock appeared 1,500 years ago, and interestingly, thousands of years prior to this moment, the prehistoric Native Americans used this area around the rock to mine soapstone, a rock prized for its heat retention properties. The Cherokee, who later resided in the area, considered the site to be sacred. As a matter of fact, the name Judicolor comes from these Cherokees. According to their legend, the rock otherwise known as Sulkala is an ancient great eyed giant, a powerful being with supernatural capabilities to fly and jump very high. The giant was believed to be capable of even controlling the rain, wind, storms, and lightning. The Cherokees believed that it was this giant that landed on the rock, whilst he was jumping from mountain to mountain, leaving on it a seven-fingered imprint of his hand. The stone is at the base of the mountain where there's an abundance of metals and minerals, and researchers have suggested there's a strong electromagnetic interference around the rock. It's said that two other engraved rocks are present in the area. One was buried in a mining accident, and the other is presumably buried as well. Since the site is dominated by the extraction of mountains rich in minerals, the area has never been completely excavated. In a limited excavation, archaeologists found extraction tools nearby, and speculated that the soapstone rock could have been carved around the date when the soapstone bowls are also dated, with other estimations dating them around 200 BC. Various theories have been raised about the meaning of the petroglyphs on the rock, and these theories are mostly based on assumptions as no one can actually tell what the original cover was trying to convey. Some of the theorists believe that the petroglyphs represent humans or some other animals of importance. Some assumptions claim that it might be some sort of map to secret locations, while others believe they are religious symbols with hidden messages. Scientists have recently made an effort to study the rock and create a detailed view using laser-guided equipment. But unfortunately, the rock has started eroding due to the weather, and it seems the symbols will gradually disappear and completely evade any further study. For now, the rock is under the care of Jackson County, and they are taking necessary steps to prevent corrosion and preserve the rock for viewing. Another fascinating discovery that's confused scientists is that of the mysterious carved stone balls. For those of you who are not aware, Carved stone balls are spherical stones which are often regarded as pressure stones, because their shapes have been altered and appear to be ornamented. They are known to have lumps and some have extensive and highly varied engraved patterns. 
they are usually round and rarely oval, and each of them have a fairly similar size, approximately 2.75 inches or 7 centimeters wide, with 3 to 160 lumps protruding on the surface, with around 6 lumps being the most common. Also, the boards are very unusual in their size. The carved stone boards dates as far back as the Neolithic, and are even presumed to be as late as the Iron Age. This tells the researchers that the stones are around 5,000 to 5,500 years old. The majority of these stones have been discovered in northeast Scotland. Most have been found in Aberdeenshire, a fertile land lying east of the Grand Pier Mountains, which happens to be one of the three major mountain ranges in Scotland. Although these carved stone boards are distinctively Scottish objects, some have been uncovered outside of Scotland, be that in Ireland and England. One place where these stone balls have been discovered is that of Cumbria and Lowick. A collection of 30 carved balls from England, Ireland and Scotland are being held at the British Museum. A few of these balls have also been found in places like the Orkney Islands. Many of the stone balls have not had their air of discovery recorded, and most are found as a result of agricultural activities. These stone balls are portable and quite easy to transport due to their size and most are sized to fit conveniently in the palm of an adult's hand. There has been a lot of assumptions as to the reason why these stones were carved. Australian author Lynn Kelly proposed that the stone spheres served as memory devices, that at the time when they were made they could have been used as memory aids for all history of time, just as Australian Aboriginal cultures used rock art in the surrounding environment, but some have suggested that they were simply used as medieval weapons either fixed to a wooden handle to be swung like a club or simply hoard at enemies. This assumption is not very credible because most of the stones are in good condition, and they do not show any kind of damage that would be evident if they were used as weapons. Pilots have been coming forward with mysterious encounters they've had while in the sky. One of these comes from 1953, and it details that of an Air Force jet that mysteriously disappeared. The incident happened over Lake Superior on the 23rd of November 1953. A US Air Defense commander noticed a small blip on one of the radars. Interestingly, there shouldn't have been anything there at the time, so shortly after its discovery, a Superior was told about the mysterious object. It was described as an unidentified flying object, and soon after an F-89C Scorpion took off. One of the reasons alarm bells were going off is because this object was above restricted airspace, so the military had to treat it with a degree of seriousness. It was then up to Lieutenant Felix Monkler to investigate the unidentified flying object. He was someone who had over 800 hours of flying experience, and with him was Second Lieutenant Robert Wilson, another person who was highly qualified. The reason this story has interested many people though is because the men didn't return from this mission, and interestingly this seems to have been the case for other pilots who have intercepted unidentified flying objects. One of the reasons the case is known is because a formal naval aviator decided to include it in their book, and details it as being one of the strangest cases involving UFOs on record. Once the pilots had reached the air they started to search for the mysterious object, However, it became apparent to the men that the object was nowhere in sight. Once they radioed into ground control, they were able to guide them in the direction of the object, but they didn't note that the unidentified flying object was able to change its course at a fast rate, and that keeping up with whatever it was could be a challenge. The jet was estimated to be travelling at over 500 miles per hour, and even at that speed it struggled to catch up with whatever the object was. It travelled in the same direction as the unidentified flying objects for 30 minutes, and with each passing minute the object seemed to have slowed down, almost as if it wanted the jet to catch up. The radio operator on the ground was working hard to direct the pilot on the same course as the UFO, and one thing that was picked up on by the operator is that the object suddenly dropped around 18,000 feet in a matter of seconds. The operator then passed this information onto the pilot, and told him he would need to follow whatever it was. Ground Control were then able to see the blip the whole time and remarked on how strange it was acting. As the pilot approached the object, something happened that worried Ground Control. 
they described it as being locked together. Then a matter of seconds later, it appeared as if the plane had completely vanished. Not wanting to jump the gun, Ground Control waited to see if this reading would change, but it didn't. The operator said the following. It disappeared from the Ground Controlled Interception Station's radar scope. The United States Air Force, United States Coast Guard and Canadian Air Force then said they would be conducting an extensive search and rescue effort. However, as of today, nothing has been found in regards to the pilot or plane. The official answer is that the crew vanished. The Air Force's official statement was the following. The jet was followed by radar until it merged with an object. Interestingly, not long after this was released, the Air Force soon retracted the statement and changed its story. Turns out that the Air Force was now saying it was the ground control operator's fault what happened, and that they'd misidentified what was in the sky that day. They said there was no UFO and what was actually in the sky was that of a Royal Canadian Air Force C-47 aircraft. Interestingly, however, in another turn of events, after this news got released, Canadian officials refuted the account, saying that no flight had taken place in the area of that night, and whatever was seen had nothing to do with them. As with many of these cases, there are various explanations that allegedly explain what happened. One investigator supposedly found out the truth, and that there was a UFO that was detected. However, the jet didn't merge with the object and disappear. Instead, the plane was flying too low and actually lost control and ended up in a nearby lake, taking the lives of the men on board. The reason the Air Force didn't want this information getting out is because they would be responsible, and it doesn't sound great that a seasoned pilot lost their life due to chasing a UFO. Another report states the object in question once again was real, but while in the sky intercepting it, something happened that caused the jet to catch fire. Another mystery is that various investigators soon vanished after researching the case. As of today, it's unknown what actually happened that day. Another mysterious case involves that of Frederick Volantage. On the 21st of October 1978, a man by the name of Frederick Volantage disappeared under mysterious circumstances. He was flying across the Bass Strait in a Cessna aircraft while on a 230 km training flight. At this point, he'd already done around 150 hours of flying time, which made him an amateur pilot. He was confident in this type of flight, so decided to do the journey. On that day at around 7 p.m. at night, the pilot radioed into the Melbourne Flight Control Center to report an unknown aircraft. He stated it was following him at around 4,500 feet. The service responded and told him there was no traffic close to him at the time of the report. Volantage was adamant about what he saw, saying a sizable unknown aircraft was closing in at high speeds, saying it had four bright landing lines. He added that the aircraft that kept approaching him was metallic and shiny, with a green light on it. Minutes later, Volantage reported that he was having problems with the engine and that when the service asked him to identify the aircraft once more, he radioed and said it isn't an aircraft. A noise like a metallic scraping sound interrupted before the transmission was cut off. Shortly after a sea and air search were conducted around the area he was last seen in, but nothing turned up. The case was closed after the Department of Transport investigated the case, but found nothing assuming the disappearance to be fatal. Five years later, an engine cow flap that came from a Cessna aircraft similar in range to Volantage was found washed ashore on Finlay's Island. According to his father, before his disappearance, Volantage believed in UFOs and was worried by the thought of being attacked by one. UFOlogists believe that his aircraft was either destroyed by extraterrestrials or they abducted him. Interestingly, locals close to where he went missing stated they saw bright green lights around the same time. Some, however, have put forth the idea that Volantis staged his own departure. With all the theories surrounding the disappearance of Frederick Volantis, none have been able to give a solid answer for what happened. Another mysterious case comes from an American airline pilot. The pilot said the following about their encounter. While flying above Florida, I witnessed something I couldn't explain. 
I'm a trained professional and my job has taught me about the different aircrafts we may encounter while flying. We also know certain codes that passengers don't understand. On this particular occasion, I was on a routine flight. The sky was clear except from a few clouds and everything was running smoothly. However, during the flight something in the distance kept catching my eye. It was like there was a large piece of metal in the sky. Its reflection was bright and to a certain extent it was beginning to distract me. As we got closer, I could see this object appear to be hovering. At this point it started to bother me that I couldn't identify what it was. I asked air traffic control if there was anything close by. However, they said they didn't have anything on radar. It was at this point I thought this thing may have been weather related. If I had to guess, I would say this object was 200 feet away from me at this time. As the journey continued, I noticed this object would peep in and out of the clouds, almost as if it was using them for cover. After parting the small amount of clouds, I then noticed this thing started to follow the plane. I could now see the object more clearly and was even more confused. The craft in question was emitting a bright light, and it reminded me of strong LED lights. If I had to guess, I would estimate the craft was 40 feet in diameter. One of the most strangest things is that this craft didn't look natural. It looked as though it was darting around in the sky. As I moved closer, I was able to see it for 20 or 30 seconds. Then it would suddenly dart somewhere in the sky. The whole encounter lasted for around half an hour. I then lost sight of it after this brief encounter. After getting a good view of this object, it didn't compare to anything I've seen before. It was more bizarre than anything else I've seen in the sky, and to this day I haven't seen anything that matched this object. A Navy pilot who recorded an unidentified flying object in 2004 has gone viral. The object in question is said to resemble a Tic Tac, and over the last few decades many military personnel have come forward with their encounters. Mr. Underwood, the Navy pilot, came forward with his encounter, and described the object as travelling very fast. The object immediately went viral across many sites, mainly because the military tend to stay away from these types of encounters, and even if they do happen they don't tend to comment on them. However, this video has been described by some theorists as being the best UFO footage to come out in recent years. Interestingly though, the Navy pilot behind the incident isn't a fan of the newfound fame. In recent interviews, he stated he doesn't want to get involved with the UFO, and doesn't think it's alien in nature. He went on to say the object in question is a UFO, an object that at that moment in time he couldn't identify. Although at first some deem the footage as fake, US Navy officials come forward and confirm the clips are genuine. Radar operator Kevin Day then came forward and said that he'd picked up on the mysterious object. Not only that, but there was a group of them flying in a tight formation. This report however came several days before the Navy pilot encountered the craft. This has caused some to suggest the UFOs were in the area before they were encountered by the pilot. This isn't uncommon and some individuals have even seen some of the most famous UFO crafts days before they make the news. The radar operator said the crafts were moving slowly. This caused some to speculate that the objects could have been birds, but the operator said the objects were flying too high to be birds, and interestingly they were flying too slow to be any conventional aircrafts. The unidentified flying objects were flying at 28,000 feet, and travelling at an approximate speed of 138 miles per hour. The objects also weren't on an established flight path, meaning they couldn't be linked to any conventional aircrafts. The operator tried to identify what they were, but couldn't come up with a logical answer. Mr. Underwood then had his encounter while he was on a flight training exercise. This happened in 2005 and he was able to remain silent about it for almost 15 years. He's had several interviews talking about the object and seems confused about what he encountered that day. In one interview he said the following, At no point did I want to speculate as to what I thought this thing was, or to be associated with alien beings, alien aircrafts and all that stuff. It was just what we call a UFO, 
I couldn't identify it and it was flying. So to me it was just an object, it's as simple as that. If anything, one thing this encounter has done has sparked a new interest in UFOs and unidentified phenomena. People are more interested in UFOs than ever before, and this could be in part because of the Navy UFO sighting. It's one of the clearest UFOs that have been captured on camera, and now the Navy have confirmed it's genuine it's given these types of sightings more credibility. Usually when a UFO is seen by someone or caught on camera it's usually debunked straight away. However, with this footage it shows that even the Navy have encountered something they're not sure of. Unfortunately, the majority of UFOs and crafts that are caught on camera are not genuine. One paranormal researcher said the following about UFOs. UFOs make for great headlines and they interest many of us. However, what researchers can agree on is that 99% of them are not genuine. The majority of videos and photographs that are taken of UFOs do eventually get solved. The issue we are facing at the moment is that there's a lot of hoaxes out there, and they're making genuine researchers' lives very difficult. Instead of trying to find real evidence and help to publish the research further, what I'm finding is that the majority of my time is spent debunking videos that don't include anything of an unexplained nature. Every day hundreds of videos of UFOs are taken, and if one sits down and applies logic it becomes very easy to explain what's actually going on in the video. Most of these alleged UFOs turn out to be everyday things. This includes solar events, photograph anomalies, birds, military operations, balloons, conventional aircrafts, toys and of course hoaxes. Interestingly, the Pentagon has even got involved in the UFO phenomena. At the end of 2017, the United States Department of Defense began their subtle declassification process. This was by slowly declassifying a collection of military documents and research information to the general public. Usually these declassification processes are fraught with financial information, technical documents and references to training programs, government budgets assistance with other nations or basic procedures, of which do not hold any significant importance outside of technical military information. However, it became apparent very quickly to members amongst the UFO community that the declassified files coming from the Pentagon were more than just research and technical information. The files that were slowly being declassified over the course of the previous years detailed information regarding a clandestine team of researchers, tasked with getting information relative to unidentified flying objects and strange extraterrestrial sightings. Back in 2007, the Department of Defense began developing a UFO research program tasked with gathering information regarding unidentified flying objects, and conducting research as to the observed aircrafts, their origin and their technological prowess. The research group was quickly budgeted with $22 million in support, and a team comprising of military intelligence officials, researchers and the highest levels of security clearance. The program itself went by the name of AATIP, which stood for the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, and was given the primary objective of identifying these unidentified flying objects as whether or not they had potential threats to national security. It didn't take long for the AATIP team to gather a wide variety of strange sighting reports, of which were made by pilots from across the country including associated data like camera footage and radar information while attempting to match these sightings with known international aircraft signatures. Expecting to find explanations to these crafts and their origin after the data had been compiled, it became rather obvious this would be more difficult than first thought. In fact, many of the researchers involved in the program regarded these UFO sightings and crafts as having no earthly origin, and displaying behaviour that couldn't be explained. This could very well be the closest the Department of Defense will ever come to admitting the viability of extraterrestrial craft without directly saying it. Although the program has currently been discontinued, which is the main cause for the declassification of the files, the chief of the UFO program still heavily believes in the importance of the study, and the viability of his team to continue their research and gather information regarding issues of national security. Louis Lazandro the program's chief military intelligence official, claimed that not only did these crafts exhibit behaviours that appear to defy the very laws of aviation, but that these crafts are found to be 100% non-man-made, and were out of the scope of human capabilities. 
His reasoning for this claim was that the craft's investigators demonstrated hypersonic capabilities. They were described as being far beyond the scope that is physically tolerable by a human being, of whom would experience a high amount of Gs to the point that would either be fatal or seriously wound them. This meant that whoever or whatever was piloting these aircraft appeared to be non-human. Not only this, but the technological developments of the craft also made it very apparent that the creation of these unidentified flying objects were vastly superior to anything man-made. The program's official describes in one of his many reports regarding the subject as saying the following. There is a lot we really don't know. We have identified anomalous aircrafts, crafts that do not have any obvious flight surfaces, forms of propulsion and maneuvering in ways that include extreme maneuverability, beyond the healthy g-forces of anything biological, low observability and positive lift. These aircraft will call them aircraft display capabilities not in the US arsenal or any other militaries. Not only does this help to supply overwhelming legitimate proof research and developments made in the UFO community, but demonstrates that the evidence regarding extraterrestrial life is both obvious and abundant amongst intelligent officials as well as legitimate in all regard. The main establishment of the secret UFO program and the objective of the UFO researchers involved in the program was to determine whether or not these unidentified flying objects were an issue of national security or posed a threat to the safety of UFO citizens and the US government. It was originally believed that these crafts could have been aircraft developed by different militaries around the world and given their ability to vanish off radar detection, could have been a variation on developments for stealth bombers or stealth aircrafts. This meant the number one task in regards to the UFO files was to determine the purpose of the aircrafts, and their origin as to determine whether or not these aircrafts posed a threat. After it became fairly obvious that the unidentified flying objects were not man-made, the issues at hand became increasingly complex. The methods used to determine whether or not these crafts were a threat to national security circled around where these crafts were spotted, the technology the crafts used and its ability to be used in warfare. Using these simple metrics, it became apparent to the researchers that not only were these unidentified flying objects a threat, but they demonstrated technological prowess that could not be matched if ever a fight played out. When you think of space exploration, you may think of companies like NASA and modern day equipment like rockets and space stations. However, there's various scriptures and books that detail our ancient ancestors possessing knowledge of the stars. This has caused some interesting conversations to be put forward, with some suggesting the idea that our ancestors may have had more knowledge of the stars, celestial bodies in the universe than we previously thought. How then were they able to do this? Back in those days, they didn't possess the technology or equipment we have today. Drawings and writings may contradict this, and although this sounds outlandish, these theories are based on evidence that we've managed to discover in recent years. Perhaps one of the most interesting discoveries comes from that of the ancient Mayan civilization. In the 7th century AD, Pakul the Great was the ruler of this time. During his time, he oversaw some of the most impressive sites at Palenque. During this era, the civilization was able to build things that many would say wasn't possible for that age. These people built complex streams that would transport them fresh water. However, one image of the ruler has caused much speculation among certain groups. The image in question depicts the king descending into the Mayan underworld. All around the carving, we can see objects that are said to represent celestial objects. This includes Venus, the Sun and the Moon. Some individuals have suggested that what this shows is the ancient Mayan civilization working on their most recent invention, and that structure has something to do with space travel. Our ancestors were obsessed with space. All over the world, these ancient civilizations found ways to observe the cosmos. Why were they interested in space? And what do these carvings show us? As of right now, archaeologists have said the carving isn't important, and doesn't have anything to do with space. But others disagree saying that the Maya people were close to developing something that may have taken them to the stars. This is of course hypothetical, but in recent years researchers have been able to find writings that prove ancient man was interested in the cosmos. 
This discovery was made in 1961 in Romania. An engineer discovered a strange looking manuscript. While looking through the ancient pages, something caught the researcher's attention. It turns out the papers were detailing concepts about rocketry, and this existed in a time when these types of things weren't meant to be around. The individual who worked in these designs was a man by the name of Comrade Haas, and he lived between 1509 and 1576. Interestingly, although he was able to design these incredible concepts of rocketry, not much is known about his life. But due to the findings by the engineer, it's caused scholars and researchers to become much more interested in this man. One of the first things the researchers noticed was that these drawings were very similar to multi-stage rockets. This is complex rocketry and is something that consists of two or more engines that are placed on top of each other. This is normally used in rockets that need to reach high altitude. So the question here then is why was someone hundreds of years ago trying to create a multi-stage rocket? It turns out that Mr. Comrade House was a talented man. The manuscript that was discovered is over 450 pages, and it hints at Comrade House being a master engineer and someone who was looked upon during this era. The manuscript also details artillery and rocket technology. Interestingly, the invention House was working on can be found in the manuscript. Comrade House was taken on by the military at an unknown time and some have theorised this was because at the time he would have been one of the most impressive engineers around. Having a good understanding of rocketry in a time when many people wouldn't have understood what it was. It's incredible that someone during this time was even able to come up with these ideas, and researchers have even said he is the first person to put into writing the concepts of multi-stage rockets. Further saying that his concepts were put to the test and they did in fact work. Incredibly, his work doesn't stop there. He went on to design in detail spacecrafts, delta fins, bell nozzles, and even liquid fuel. Being one of the first people to create complex things like this, it begs the question of where he's getting these ideas from. It's interesting to think in this one manuscript it details a man being able to grasp the concepts of rocketry. It makes you wonder how many more documents are out there that talk about the secrets of the past. Found among the dense vegetation are hidden wells with complex structures and more hidden artifacts and civilizations than anywhere else in the world. This means that millions of undiscovered strange artifacts have been lost to history all throughout the world's dense jungles. However, over the years a number of these have been discovered by researchers. The Olmec are known as the first major civilization in Mexico. They appeared around 1600 BCE. They were actually the first people who figured out how to turn latex of the rubber tree into something that can be easily shaped. The Olmec culture has been a huge influence on many later civilizations. For example, the Maya. This society was known for their massive stone heads they carved from basalt, a volcanic rock. There are not many things that have been written about the Olmec, but from the archaeological evidence we have today it seems they were not very economically confined. The Olmec were defined by their art style. They were able to build with various materials such as clay, basalt, jade and even greenstone. Most of their art was made out of green coloured materials, so much of the art found is only based on nature. The best pieces of art they've left behind are those colossal massive heads. There are 17 massive stones that represent humans. Made out of large boulders, all of these heads date back to around 900 BCE. The heads that have been found are said to portray Olmec men, all of them having distinct features of their civilization. Not a single head is the same as another. Each of the heads has their own unique headdress representing specific individuals. It's believed the heads are representing the portraits of powerful individuals of the Olmec civilization, but the methods and logic behind how they were transported and carved stays a mystery. Additionally, researchers over the years have found several of these large carved heads, each one measuring roughly to be 3 metres in height, 3 metres in width and more than 40,000 pounds in weight. Interestingly, it appears that the stone heads are impossible to date, and can only be measured by looking at the time in which the large stones were buried to predict the time of their creation. The accepted information from researchers is that the heads were buried during 900 BC, 
but could predate this time by more than several hundred years in creation. Despite the lack of scientific proof as to the age, researchers have characterized the heads as having come from the pre-classic period of the Mesoamerican chronology, dating somewhere close to 1500 to 1000 BC. Every year researchers manage to discover new things about our past. Back in 2018, there appeared to be a discovery that in all pyramids from around the world, including Bosnian pyramid structures and ancient Mayan temple structures, there were large bodies of water discovered in chambers that ran beneath the pyramids and tunnels that could have stretched for over 10 miles. Interestingly enough, when researchers began looking at the pyramids at Giza, there appeared to be a massive underground water tunnel network that ran underneath the Giza plateau, and that has long since been dried out. This led researchers to look more into what was believed to be a naturally formed water chambers, and the roles they could have played in the construction of the large pyramids and other pyramid structures. They found that although water beneath structures usually plays a large role in the instability of the base of the structure, it appeared as if the network of tunnels and water chambers found in pyramids from all over the world appeared to not threaten the stability of the pyramid. This led researchers to believe the tunnels must have been accounted for in the construction of the pyramid, or possibly added after construction with the pyramid stability in mind. Still to this day, Egyptologists and researchers are completely unaware as to what the role of these underwater chambers helped to play in the construction of the pyramids, and why they seem to be so important to the structures overall. Currently, the only working theory is the introduction of a hydromechanical purpose, or that of added underground pressure to a certain air of the structure. What's interesting is that these discoveries and structures are only a small portion of what's managed to survive. Researchers have come forward and said that 98% of our past has vanished from our planet, so it's unlikely we'll know the details of our ancient past. Every year researchers do an amazing job of discovering anomalies out in space. Finding out what they mean and why they're here has proven to be sometimes difficult. With space being so vast it's said we'll never truly be able to wrap our heads around it. However, that hasn't stopped some of the world's greatest minds at trying to understand what's lurking out in the vastness of space. Over the last few decades, telescopes and observatories have been an essential part for aiding with the discovery of new galaxies, planets and nebulas. One of these recently helped astronomers and researchers lock onto a mysterious object lurking just outside of our solar system. The team used the Very Large Array Radio Telescope and Observatory, which can be found in central New Mexico. It's not just one telescope here that's helped researchers with their goals. In fact, the observatory is home to over 20 large radio telescopes, all of which have some of the best tech installed into them to help researchers hunt the cosmos. Perhaps some of the most impressive discoveries made here by the astronomers include that of black holes, young stars and anomalies in the Milky Way galaxy, being found at an elevation of 2,100 meters, or 6,970 feet makes these telescopes some of the best on the planet, and it's very likely they will be making more amazing discoveries for years to come. One such discovery to come from using the very large array telescopes, was that of a mystery rogue planet that was detected outside of our solar system. The reason it gets the term of a rogue planet is because researchers couldn't detect if the planet has a parent star. One of the reasons these planets make the news is because they've been ejected from the planetary system, or have never been bound to a star. In fact, astronomers who have studied these types of planets have come forward and said there could be billions of them in the Milky Way galaxy alone. One of the most recent rogue planets is that of SIMP J01365663 plus 0933473. The planet has been described as being 12.7 times larger than Jupiter, and has an incredible magnetic field which is said to be far more impressive than Jupiter's. This is an impressive comparison, as Jupiter produces some of the most impressive auroras our solar system has to offer. Going back a few years ago, NASA captured one of Jupiter's most impressive auroras to date. They are much bigger than Earth's and also produce thousands of times more energy. Another interesting thing about this is Jupiter creates its own auroras. 
Earth doesn't create its own. Instead, Earth's auroras are created by solar storms. One of the reasons Jupiter can do this is because of its strong magnetic field. This allows it to grab charged particles from its surroundings. These auroras were first picked up on when the Voyager 1 spacecraft passed by Jupiter in the 1970s. You would think that this would be a rare occurrence, but astronomers said during a 2007 press release they were so frequent that every time they looked at Jupiter through a telescope they could see the auroras. After conducting further tests on the rogue planet, astronomers have estimated it's around 200 million years old. It's not going to be a place that humans will want to visit. The planet's temperature averages at around 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and due to its size the planet almost makes it into the category of a gas giant. One of the lead researchers who worked on discovering the planet said the following. This object is right at the boundary between a planet and a brown dwarf, or a failed star and is giving us some surprises that can potentially help us understand magnetic processes on both stars and planets. Astronomers in 2018 also went on to say the following. In 2018, we noted that detecting SIMP with the very large array through its auroral radio emissions meant we was able to have new ways of detecting exoplanets, including the elusive rogue ones not orbiting a parent star. This particular object is exciting because studying its magnetic dynamo mechanisms can give us new insights on how some types of mechanisms can operate in extrasolar planets, planets beyond our solar system. We think these mechanisms can work not only in brown dwarfs, but also in both gas giants and terrestrial planets. Another mysterious rogue planet that was captured by astronomers was that of the Chao 110913 773444. However, there is an air of mystery that surrounds this object, as researchers are not sure what this object actually is. When it was first discovered, they classified it as a protoplanetary disk. However, many astronomers want to classify it as either a sub-round dwarf or a rogue planet. Another mysterious space structure that researchers have been able to study is that of the cosmic web. It's been described as being the brain of the universe, this is because the cosmic web appears to have strands of structures that link many galaxies, and when first looking at it, the web even looks like the inside of a brain. Recent observations show scientists that galaxies believed to be around 11 to 12 billion light years away are linked together, and this is being held by a network of galaxy filament. This filament could help researchers to answer questions regarding how the universe was formed, and details about the Big Bang. Professor Michelle Famagali said the following about the discovery. It's very exciting to see for the first time multiple and extended filaments in the early universe. We finally have a way to map these structures directly, and to understand in detail their role in regulating the formation of supermassive black holes and galaxies. Another interesting discovery has been made resting a short 40 light years away from our planet and it appears to be the largest mass of diamonds to ever have existed within our solar neighbours. Known as 55 Cancri E, the rest of planets made almost entirely out of diamonds that is expected to be roughly 8 times the collective mass of our Earth. Unfortunately, if you planned on mining the planet to fire its precious gems, you would find the entire planet to be so hostile that it is most likely almost entirely covered in lava. The planet is expected to be tidally locked, which means there rests a permanent day side and a permanent night side, as there is no rotation to create a day and night cycle. This leaves the day side of the planet to be more than 1,700 degrees Celsius in temperature, a temperature more than hot enough to turn iron into liquid. Its gravity works out to be more than 8 times that of Earth's gravity, and the large amount of data concerning surface temperature variations have been connected to a large amount of possible volcanic activity and this releases large clouds of dust that can cover the whole air of the planet, and turn it into darkness. If that doesn't make mining operations seem near impossible, the orbit of the planet around its sun takes less than 18 hours to complete. That means that an entire year on 55 Kangri E is less than a single day on Earth, making landing and launching to and from the planet nearly impossible to maintain. Something interesting in regards to space was announced by researchers a while back, 
and it also involves tardigrades. One question that's come up is what is the toughest animal on Earth? Although many may look to some of the larger creatures that walk the planet, scientists have said it's the small creatures that come out on top, and one of these goes by the name of tardigrade. Many may not be aware of these creatures, but they're micro-animals with segmented bodies. They are usually water-dwelling creatures but have been found everywhere on the planet. They thrive in harsh conditions. For example, they've been found in the Antarctic ice, deep in ocean beds, dried up lakes and even high in the Himalayas. Recently, these creatures made the news for heading into space. It goes back to an Israeli spacecraft that tried to land on the lunar surface. However, the mission didn't go to plan and the spacecraft ended up crashing on the moon. This mission occurred on the 11th of April, and now researchers are saying the lunar surface could be filled with these tiny creatures. The original mission's plan was to land a robotic lander that had tardigrades on it. Due to the unfortunate event though, it's not known if these small creatures survived. Although scientists have said it's very likely due to how resilient they are. It's not known how long they will live for, but scientists have said it's very likely they'll be on the lunar surface for a while. Another worry that some researchers have put forward is that it's not a good idea to go polluting the moon. It's no secret that many missions have gone to the moon, and over the years humans have left behind a lot of debris. Most of this comes from redundant missions or because we can't return certain things. Going back to tardigrades, scientists have called them extremophobes due to them being able to survive in such harsh conditions. One thing scientists are doing is studying these creatures to see if we can replicate what they do. If we were able to take some of the tardigrades' abilities and place them in a human, it would make us much more superior. At the moment, the human body is not great at handling harsh conditions. In fact, for humans to survive in an environment, everything has to be exactly right. It's been estimated that tardigrades have been around for over 500 million years, meaning they outlived the dinosaurs. The Canada-France Hawaii Observatory is a world-class 3.6-meter optical infrared telescope. It's one of the best telescopes in the world and has a great vantage point as it's located on top of a dormant volcano. The volcano in question is 4,200 meters or 13,770 feet and can be found on the island of Hawaii. In recent years, various telescopes across the globe have made various incredible discoveries some of which have helped us to answer some interesting questions in regards to space. The Canada-France Hawaii Observatory first started being used in 1979, and since then its main goal has been to aid in astronomical discoveries made near its location. The observatory is said to be getting refurbishment sometime this year, and this will help the telescope deliver even more detailed images. Although these telescopes are built to help scientists and researchers with their work in the field of astronomy, every so often they pick up on things that leaves both the researchers and the public asking various questions. This happened several days ago when the telescope managed to record a cylindrical looking object that entered the Earth's atmosphere. The object in question is thought to be big, and some even compared it to the space object Oumuamua that was detected passing through the solar system. As of right now, we have no official answer for what the object is, and various ideas have been put forward ranging from a missile test to space junk, a meteor, and even a UFO. Interestingly, there was a link put out by the observatory, but when you click on the link now, all it shows is a not found error code. This has caused some to speculate that either the discovery was not that important, or that it could have been something that wasn't meant to have been picked up on. This is one of the reasons people are going down the UFO route. It's important to remember that a UFO is simply an object that someone cannot identify at that moment in time. Hence why it stands for Unidentified Flying Object. It's only been in recent years that UFOs have been linked to extraterrestrial beings. With that being said, over the last few decades photographs have been taken allegedly showing cigar-shaped UFOs. In fact, these shaped crafts have recently been reported by pilots, and they are now coming forward with their own stories and encounters with these mysterious crafts. 
Eyewitnesses describe them as looking like a long tube and usually being black or white in colour. They are reported as making no noises and being able to travel at very high speeds. Some of these crafts have even been observed going from a standstill to disappearing in a matter of seconds. This is one of the reasons why some people have linked these crafts to military operations or UFOs. However, the link between the military doesn't make sense as those working for the military have come forward and said it's not them. Interestingly, the object that was captured by the observatory appears to have a trail behind it, and this has caused some to speculate that it could be a meteorite. With that being said, when these astronomical bodies enter our atmosphere they usually make the news, and this is because of how impressive they are. But for some reason this object didn't make the news. As mentioned, online users did make the connection between this object and the mysterious space object Oumuamua. Oumuamua caused waves around the scientific community when it was discovered back in October of 2017. The object in question had come from another solar system and it was quickly given the name of Oumuamua. What stood out about this object though was it seemingly appeared out of nowhere, which in turn caused many to ask questions. When researchers were able to lock onto the object, they could see it travelling around the sun and then shooting away again. They picked up on the fact that Oumuamua showed a really strong non-gravitational acceleration. This tells the researchers that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. Interestingly, going back a few months ago, another object that looks similar to Oumuamua was discovered. This was found by amateur astronomers who were looking through Google Sky. Google Sky allows you to look at some of the most impressive sights our galaxy has to offer. While looking through here the large cylindrical object was found. When compared side by side you can see the resemblance. The object in question is 1400 meters long and 120 meters high. People are suggesting that whatever a Muamura is this is the same thing. Perhaps if we study this it would give us a better understanding of what a Muamura is. Going back to the Canada-France-Hawaii Observatory, some have suggested it's a meteorite, while others say the way it shoots across the sky doesn't make it look like a meteorite. As of right now there's no definitive answer for what the observatory captured. Over the years NASA has made some incredible discoveries but recently they've come forward and said that they found a planet that could potentially host human life. This planet is known as GJ357D, and NASA have said it's around 31 light years away from our solar system. It orbits in the Goldilocks zone of the GJ35 system, and this is where scientists have speculated that water could form. The reason it gets the name of a super-Earth is because it's over six times the size of Earth, Lisa Koltenga, who is an astronomy professor, said the following about the planet. It's a distance from the star that is not too hot and not too cold. The planet was not expected to be there so it's like a freebie, because it was discovered in the follow-up. I was on vacation at the time and I was completely surprised. Although this is an incredible discovery, the planet is too far away. What is told researchers though is there could be other Earth-like planets nearby. As the human race develops its technological prowess, we have to look to the horizon to see whether or not this technology is helping us move on to the next big thing. With the advent of new robotics and research into artificial intelligence, it appears to be a race against time before we find our inventions slowly smothering us under the weight and responsibility of progress. In order to combat these changes, Many scientists and researchers have said we need to look to the stars. Another planet's researchers have found interesting is that of Kepler 20f. Although the planet's known as Kepler 20f is more than 929 light years away from Earth, meaning it would take more than 900 years travelling at the speed of light before humanity could even reach the planet, it's still an ideal location for the establishment of future colonies and holds more similarities to Earth than Venus itself. In fact, the planet Kepler 20f is much more cooler than Venus, being more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit cooler at its maximum temperature. When the planet was first discovered back in 2011, it was noticed as being a rocky planet with the same mass, radius and gravity as planet Earth. 
while also supporting a rich atmosphere believed to be containing vast amounts of water vapour. Unfortunately, this water vapour caused a runaway greenhouse effect that sees the planet at an overall temperature too hot to support life. However, with a few modifications to the environment, it could very well be a much better twin than Venus without requiring the extensive needs of terraforming as on our neighbouring planet. On the 3rd of September 2003, the Hubble telescope would discover something that would change the way we view our universe. The Hubble pointed its cameras at a small region of space and it managed to capture many images. All these images were combined from the data collected and ended up showing scientists this. It's estimated that in this one small section alone is over 10,000 galaxies, and inside these galaxies could be millions or billions of planets. It's really tough to get your head around these kinds of numbers, but it just shows you how vast the universe really is. Scientists have said that although this find is incredible, this was found in only a tiny region of space, suggesting that hundreds of millions of galaxies are still out there waiting to be discovered. The image has become known as the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, and researchers have said that some of the galaxies you see in this image could have formed shortly after the Big Bang. What's interesting is that on the 23rd of January 2019, scientists managed to create a deeper version of the image, which has allowed them to view the galaxies in more detail. This told them that the largest galaxies were in fact two times larger than previously thought. Cutting across billions of light years, scientists have said this photograph represents a deep core sample of the universe. Another interesting fact to come from this research is that some of these galaxies cannot be seen in visible light. This comes down to the light being given out from certain galaxies not being able to reach certain areas of space, and that some light has also been absorbed by intergalactic hydrogen. As mentioned, astronomers have suggested that some of the galaxies could have formed only a couple of hundred million years after the formation of the universe. This means that these planets could be host to very complex life. A planet that's had billions of years to form and mature could hold things we couldn't comprehend. On the other hand, they could be like most other planets and be too hostile for life. With that being said though, complex organisms have shown researchers they can survive in harsh conditions. This includes things like tardigrades. Well, throughout history, there appears to be a number of strange and unexplainable phenomena centered around religious gatherings and events. After further studies, some of these seem impossible to explain. Additionally, many of these strange and mysterious religious events seem to point to the idea that perhaps our world is far stranger than we ever realized. Perhaps one of the most famous ones is that of the Miracle of the Sun. Back on the 13th of October in 1917, there was an immense gathering of individuals located in Fatima, Portugal. This was after they heard the accounts of three shepherd children, and after telling their story, many were interested. Before this point, the children had claimed that they had seen the Virgin Mary and witnessed her miracles preaching the gospel of Christianity and gaining their own following. Interestingly, the storm that struck Fatima on the 13th of October 1917 did not prevent people from visiting Fatima for the promise of a miracle. The people of this region were not sure of what was going on, but they were certain that something out of the ordinary was bound to occur that day. The story of the miracle of the sun started with the three children detailing their encounter with the Virgin Mary this was while they were making their way back home. Interestingly, this apparition allegedly said to one of the children it was going to return on day 13 for the next couple of months. After telling them this message, it said the mysterious being vanished. The children narrated the incident to their parents and the villagers, and the sensational report spread throughout the whole of Portugal and attracted a huge crowd. It's been estimated by researchers that a crowd of between 70,000 and 100,000 people gathered at the foretold scene. This was despite harsh weather conditions. As promised though, something was seen that day and many believed they were witnessing a genuine miracle. Not every witness however reported the same thing. Some said they saw the sun dancing around in the sky. Others reported seeing the sun falling towards the earth in a zigzag motion which caused the fear of an explosion as a result of the sun's collision with the Earth. 
Some said they saw brilliant colours spinning from the sky in a pinwheel pattern, and the rest reported seeing nothing out of the ordinary. Today, many churches have said the event was real, and that the Virgin Mary made herself present that day. Even a researcher by the name of John D. Marchi, of whom spent over seven years compiling over a hundred thousand reports, found the event impossible to deny, and evident that something truly strange had occurred in front of the crowds gathered. Interestingly, some have suggested the object in question was actually an unidentified flying object, and that it would make it one of the largest mass UFO sightings ever seen. This was backed up by the descriptions of the people that witnessed the anomaly, and some researchers have said the object in question sounds more like a UFO than the sun. Further saying the sun can't physically jump around in the sky, so what we're left with is a mysterious object that's able to travel around in the sky at extreme speeds. Another interesting religious account is that of Our Lady of Zaitun. It was on the 2nd of April 1968, just after Egypt had lost a six-day battle to Israel, resulting in the lost lives of over 2,000 troops in Israel occupying the Sinai Peninsula, when a Muslim mechanic suddenly saw a young woman standing on top of St. Mary's Orthodox Church in Zaitun. At the time, he was working close to the church. He thought she was on the verge of doing something she may regret, and so ran to help her. A group of onlookers gathered there and saw her, but she quickly disappeared. The Virgin Mary first appeared to Father Constantine Musa, a priest at St. Mary's Church, and when she spoke to him, he fainted. Because of his humility, Father Constantine did not reveal this visitation until days before he passed away in 1984. He told the chairman of the committee that the Blessed Mary had talked to him about the nature of her visit, asking him to be prepared. He had no idea that millions of people were going to visit the church. At least one million Egyptians and many other people saw a luminous figure of a woman on top of St. Mary's Church in Zaitun. This was between 1968 and 1971. The apparitions mostly happened on feast days, lasting several minutes with the longest one lasting for nine hours. Many witnesses remember seeing Mary holding an olive branch which symbolized the peace that Middle Easterns desperately needed. Some saw Mary bowing before a cross, blessing the crowds and walking across the domes of the church. At some point, a crowd of around 250,000 people witnessed one of the apparitions. In the early hours of the 13th of April, a photographer overcame the sensation of immobility, which prevented most of the people from taking pictures. He was able to snap some photographs of the events, and interestingly, after doing so, this helped an injured arm. It was reported that after taking the photographs and seeing the apparition, he felt much better. This was later confirmed as true by doctors. The witnesses to these apparitions also reported seeing luminous doves during the night, with flashes of bright colors reminiscing the miracle of the sun in Fatima. Other people saw Mary with St. Joseph, or where she cradled Jesus at around 12 years old. Most remember the scent of incense in Zaitun. Non-Christian medical professionals confirmed many miraculous healings occurring in Zaitun between 1968 and 1971, a period that saw numerous conversions. Unlike in Fatima, many remained silent in all of the apparitions in Zaitun. The authorities in Egypt ordered that the unusual events be investigated after observing the growing crowds. They however saw no projectors, light sources or any other devices that would be intended to trick the public. This was after searching a 15 mile radius of the church. Photos of these apparitions were published in various Egyptian newspapers, with video footage being broadcast on the news. Europe and America are probably preoccupied with other events were not very interested in the apparitions, but featured an article under the title Visions of the Virgin Mary reported in Cairo. The church recognized the apparitions and the Pope said this was a positive and genuine account. The Vatican, however, did not give any statement on the apparitions authenticity, since they happened in an Orthodox church. Many believe the apparitions to be Mary's comeback to Zaitun, as they claim this being one of the Holy Family's home. 
a landowner who was an orthodox in Zaitun claimed that in 1918, Mary came to him in a dream and asked him to build a church in Zaitun in her honour. It was exactly 50 years after this dream when the apparition started. Zaitun was not the only place that witnessed Mary's apparition. Many have reported seeing Mary with some elements of Zaitun like the scent of incense, Mary walking on a church roof and luminous doves being sighted. Whether a person believes in the apparitions at Zaitun or not is a matter of personal faith. Suggested evidence however exists in their favour, as hundreds of thousands of people saw these mysterious beings. Another interesting account is Our Lady of Warwick, in which the Virgin Mary was also reported to have manifested overhead the church of the Virgin Mary located in the city of Giza in Egypt. Again during the sighting, the first to view the event was that of Muslim neighbours across the streets that reportedly saw a large orb, and this mysterious light was hovering above the church. As residents were watching the mysterious light, it started to take the form of a female. Given the previous sightings back in 1968, the event of Our Lady of Warwick that occurred in 2009, were quickly compared to past sightings and was instantly believed to have been the return of the Virgin Mary's apparitions. Additionally, a number of high quality photographs were taken of the event, that show in great detail a large glowing white apparition of a woman, and that she appeared over the dome of the church. Today, these marine apparition sightings and gathered proof continue to be ignored by skeptics as no reasonable explanations have come forward. Interestingly, it's not known what these apparitions were or what they mean, but the people that attended these events are very sure of what they saw. Many of these accounts match each other, and in these cases we do have photographic evidence, something that doesn't normally happen when we talk about these types of subjects. So the big question is what do these photographs show? Is this proof that there's something in the afterlife, and that people are able to come back if necessary? Critics however have said that generators could have been used to create these apparitions, and that it was used during these events to get people's attention. However, as mentioned, the government at the time did investigate the claims, and do research in the local area. They found nothing that could suggest the Lady of Warwick was being created by a source of light. They searched a large area and found nothing. Back in 1966, a mysterious event happened that left many people wanting answers. Two men were found to be motionless. However, this case would take a mysterious turn when they were found with strange objects. This case is yet to be explained, and over the last few decades various theories have been put forward. The men's plans and deaths were odd enough. This was because they were both in good health and not old. Not just that, but both of the men had passed away together, and within a matter of minutes. Due to the objects and circumstances around what happened, this case has become known as the Lead Mask Case. On the 17th of August 1966, two electronics repairmen left their town and went to search for supplies. These were thought to be for one of their cars and for work. It's said they had the money on them to buy these items. After this, the men decided to stop off at a bar to pick up some water. The bartender who was on shift said they picked up on the fact that one of the men named Miguel wanted to get going. The bartender went on to say they both seemed short for time, and that they kept checking their watches. It was noted that this was the last time anyone would see the men alive. Three days later, the men were discovered on Vintem Hill in Rio de Janeiro. The police were then called and they began an investigation. However, the investigation took a strange turn when it was discovered the men had strange items on them. It was reported that both men were dressed in smart suits and had waterproof coats on. Both men had lead masks with no holes in. There was also water bottles, a notebook and a towel. As if this isn't strange enough, the notebook just confused the investigators even more. It contained the following. 1630 be at agreed place. 1830 swallow capsules. After effect, protect metals, wait for mass signal. One theory that was put forward was that the men had the lead mask because they were expecting radioactivity. 
However, later tests showed that no radiation was detected near the area. The cryptid message has thrown investigators off for years. They have no idea what the men are referring to. Some have suggested they are doing some kind of business meeting and something went wrong. But the way they said protect metals and wait for Mars signal has thrown many people off. Another theory is that they were trying to contact extraterrestrials. It was reported that strange lights were seen in the skies a few days earlier, and this could have been why the men did what they did. Another theory is that the men took the pills to try and contact aliens telepathically. However, the diary says to meet at a range place. A range would mean they'd already spoken to someone prior to this event. This has made some think that whoever they were meeting may have lured them into an ambush. The diary entry along with the mysterious details haven't helped this case, and over the years many theories have been put forward. Interestingly, another theory surfaced and this was by a friend of the two men. They said the two men were actually members of a group of scientific spiritualists. The men were said to have tried to contact extraterrestrials or spirits, and they tried to accomplish this by making some type of psychedelic. They thought that during the encounter there would be a blinding light, and that's why they created the metal masks, to help shield their eyes from this large amount of light. It's then said they took too many psychedelics and ended up passing away. This is however just a theory and doesn't prove this was the cause of their demise. Interestingly, on the nights they passed away, locals in the area did report seeing unidentified flying objects. It's hard to pinpoint the exact shapes of the craft seen, but it's said they range from glowing orbs to silent circular crafts. One of the witnesses said they'd seen blinking orbs in the area a few nights before the men passed away, and that these odd looking crafts would scan the ground and then shoot up in the sky. They said they hadn't seen any object or craft that was able to move this fast, and all the time they were in the sky they were pulsating. Another resident said they saw similar objects and one of these looked like an eyeball, and that it appeared to be searching the nearby area. This resident said they couldn't explain what it was, and that it was too small to be anything made by a human. It's been put forward by some amateur researchers that this is why the men tried to contact extraterrestrials. They had seen the crafts and tried to think up of a way of being able to contact them. Reports showed there was no sign of a struggle and there was no injuries on the men's body. As of right now it's anyone's guess as to what happened to the men, and it remains one of the most mysterious unsolved cases. Another mysterious case is that of Linda Porter. Though the report wasn't written until 1991, the case of Linda Porter and her abduction encounters that took place back in 1963 helped to paint an even more important picture of that alien intervention and abduction. The story was first told by that of famed reporter and regional Emmy winner Linda Moulton Howell, of whom was contacted by Linda Porter after receiving a package through the mail containing an audio cassette, a written letter and drawings from Linda Porter. The letter informed the journalist of her abduction that took place back in 1963 in California. According to Linda Porter, she had been abducted by grey aliens when she was a young child, only roughly 15 years old and experienced experiments that she referred to as soul transfers. Linda Porter claimed that as she was taken up into an extraterrestrial spacecraft, she had seen a large praying mantis-like creature that could communicate with her telepathically, and detail a vast amount of information surrounding the universe. Shortly after this confrontation, she claimed to have switched bodies into that of a clone body via a soul transfer. She was told by the extraterrestrial beings that her body had a bad heart, and that she would have soon passed away had they not intervened, but that her new body would be far healthier and stronger for her to use. Shortly after this transfer, she witnessed a number of other abductees in large vents or containers, of whom were being studied by the extraterrestrials as the nature of a human soul was quite unknown to the extraterrestrials inhabiting the spacecraft. Additionally, Linda Porter claimed to have seen a number of surrounding grey aliens that stood beside the massive praying mantis-like aliens, and seemed to have been operating as a hive mind as they communicated telepathically. This behaviour led her to believe that the function of their civilization is based primarily off telepathic communication, 
to prevent misinterpretation of far more complex ideas. No further information surrounding her abductions could be known, and outside of her audio cassette tapes and drawn images no other data can be gathered. As of today it's gone down as one of the most mysterious cases involving abductions. Another mysterious case is that of Dorothy Yidi, Regarded as one of the most compelling cases of modern day reincarnation, Dorothy Eady was a London born woman who worked to solve ancient Egyptian mysteries and secrets, and was regarded as a legitimate resource used by Egyptologists and famed archaeologists around the world. Dorothy was born in London in 1904, and made the claim that she was the living reincarnation of Om Seti, a high priestess selected from birth to be the keeper of the Abidas Temple of Seti. What's so compelling about her account is that since birth, Dorothy could fluently speak and read the Egyptian language. This was more than odd given the fact that the Egyptian language had long been extinct, and that no one currently alive was aware of how it sounded. Even those who had cracked the code behind the language and the hieroglyphs were uncertain of exactly how the pronunciations of certain words were handled. That was until Dorothy systematically taught and explained the language in vast detail that worked to confirm a lot of the long-standing theories, as well as filling in old holes and mysteries. Egyptologists would even later go on to prove the legitimacy of Dorothy's fluency in Egyptian, after they began studying neighbouring native languages that arose and evolved from Egyptians in the area, and found their slang and accents to directly mimic certain sounds, words and pronunciations by Dorothy. This wasn't the height of her accomplishments however, as she would later go on to help uncover many locations of ancient Egyptian sites buried beneath the sand, discover secret chambers and assist with the recovery of long forgotten and hidden ancient Egyptian artifacts. In 1979, the New York Times wrote a piece on Dorothy that regarded her as the western world's most intriguing and convincing modern case histories of reincarnation. Roads are everywhere, and interestingly some of these have been at the centre of a number of stories. One of these roads is that of the mysterious Devil's Highway, or as it's also known Highway 666. Many have wondered why this road came to be known as the Devil's Highway, and this comes down to the many mysterious encounters people have had. This stretch of road was only created back in 2003 and in recent years many stories have made their way online about the many things people have witnessed. At the time of the conflict between the United States and Mexico in 1846, it was a simple trade route that served the Mexican nation known as the Old Spanish Way. Over time the road had evolved and eventually the American Association of State Highway Officials added it to the highway in 1926. Over the years, Highway 666 has been surrounded by lots of ominous events, and was thus hailed as one of the most haunted places in America. Christians are of the belief that the number reflected in 666 represents what they call the number of the beast. When this street was under its alleged evil number, many refer to it as the Devil's Highway. According to statistics, there was an unusually high number of accidents and deaths on this road when it was under the ID of 666, so many believe that anyone travelling on this road would be cursed immediately. Throughout the history of the road, every accident and death has been reflected as a situation that's occurred due to the voice of the evil that resides in this stretch of road and its surroundings. When the United States changed the name of the road to US Route 491, Statistics associated with accidents and deaths were drastically reduced. Many argued this was because people no longer experienced the psychological fear that something will happen to them while travelling on a road marked 666. However, some argue that the number 491 fails to attract the same evil spirits to this road, and the spirits preferred the number 666. Many consider this inexplicable phenomena quite mysterious. One of the most popular stories surrounding the mystery of this haunted highway is the reports of an ominous black sedan that appears to taunt vehicles driving along this road. Many individuals that have travelled this road have reported that once darkness falls, a strange black sedan simply appears out of nowhere, and it charges at the unsuspecting travellers. The witnesses all claim to see headlights charging behind them, and gaining on them quickly no matter how fast they speed up. 
Many claim to have abandoned their cars just to avoid the oncoming vehicle, or some claim the car simply drives past them as if giving off a warning, and some claim the car simply disappears as soon as it gets close. Black ghostly dogs have also been reported to appear on this road, and these creatures are allegedly able to run at extremely fast speeds, all while biting the sides of your car. Another interesting story is that of someone who had the Mark 666 burned into their car. As of today, the mysterious events surrounding this road have been hard to debunk, with many saying that what they experienced was real and they had no way of explaining what was going on. Another mysterious road is that of the Mary Angela Road in Tennessee. Tennessee has been known by many as the home to a couple of haunted places, and one of the most popular haunted sites is that of the Voodoo Village in Memphis. The Voodoo Village is located on Mary Angela Road in southwest Memphis. According to residents, the area is home to the St. Paul Spiritual Temple and is enclosed in a large iron fence, but legends suggest there's more than just a religious surface taking place here. Reports of sacrificial offerings, black magic, and ghostly apparitions suggest that Voodoo Village is full of supernatural activities. Voodoo Village is a quiet place and in recent years there have been many stories told about it, most of which usually date back to the 1960s and 1970s. The Mary Angela Road was and is still regarded as the infamous Dark Road, and is alleged to be haunted. Some believe that any outsider that steps foot into Voodoo Village will be surrounded by its residents, and will not be allowed to leave. The village is referred to as a mysterious little corner of haunted Memphis. The village became popular during the 1960s. This was when fights started to break out between gangs. Since then, Voodoo Village has seen a high increase in strange events, and its reputation has only grown over the years. It consisted of four houses that had voodoo symbols and statues in the front gardens, and the most notable statue was that of Jesus holding a Bible with a dagger through the Bible in his hand. The village is said to be inhabited by a variety of people, and they are led by a man named Wash Harris who was the village's chief in the 1980s. The strange fact is that Harris is still being referred to as a chief by many of the residents, and they also believe that he's a saint and he's immortal. This has raised a lot of speculation that Harris is still alive inside the village, and is just being closely guarded by his followers. It's said that the people of Voodoo Village practice strange rituals that involve animals. Although journalists are often expelled from the village, photographs have often experienced the wrath of villagers, and it's a long-standing warning that photographs should not be taken inside the town, or even from the road. Many of those who tried were stoned and pursued from the streets by locals with machetes. Some believe that photographs are prohibited because once developed, they will reveal the ghosts of many people who have lost their lives in the village over the years. Others insist that the photographs will reveal the village's true form. It's no doubt that Voodoo Village of Memphis is a place of fear and curiosity and many who have experienced the mysteries of the village have urged other curious travellers to stay well clear of Mary Angela Road, and back away from the Voodoo Village and all its residents. Kelly Road of Pennsylvania is another road that's shrouded in mystery. Those who've gone looking for haunted roads in Pennsylvania have always ended up at Kelly Road, which is also known as Mystery Mile. As a matter of fact, Kelly Road is one of the top haunted roads in the world, it's a one mile stretch of road that has many mysterious stories attached to it. The road is paved and is the site of some very unexplainable events. The road has been plagued by strange events for decades. While driving on the road, docile animals have been reported to turn violent and drive people away. Their mood suddenly explodes and flares up into a violent rage. Farm animals near the road have reported to break out of their pens and cages and charge out the passing vehicles in frenzy. The road is surrounded by a very dark forest that some say is haunted. The forest seems to come alive at night, with many reports of disturbing voices and strange noises coming from within. The popular theory is that these supernatural events are probably related to a curse placed on Kelly Road by the Native Americans, 
angry at the people who took their homes. Whatever the cause may be, after reaching the one mile mark the complaints stop, and the paranormal activities suddenly cease to occur. There have also been reports of cult activities within the forest, and this has only increased the rumours surrounding this mystery mile. Another mysterious legend is that of the Hairy Hounds of Dartmoor. Found in Dartmoor, England resides a strip of road that's become so notorious for its number of annual accidents, that a large portion of the local residents claim it to be at the centre of an impossible to explain supernatural phenomenon. This phenomenon has become known as the Hairy Hounds of Dartmoor. The witnesses often reported that seemingly out of nowhere it would feel as if the steering wheel was being pulled in a specific direction, as if someone or something grabbed onto the steering wheel and attempted to throw them off the road. This soon led to many claiming that the accidents were the result of some gaudy figure of a pair of hands attempting to drive people off the road, a theory that would be later tested to a certain level of success. Journalist and author Rufus Ender would claim the following. A pair of hands gripped the driving wheel, and I had to fight for control, proving that the accident could be avoided if one was aware where the hands were pulling the wheel. Shortly after driving away from the road, the hands disappeared as quickly as they first appeared, leaving Mr. Endel with the feeling that the road itself was the haunted location of the hairy hands. Stargazers across Europe have been enjoying the large pink supermoon. Although it's called this, astronomers have said there's no difference in colour. The best time to see this moon in the UK will be at around 4am tonight. For many stargazers, this is an event they don't want to miss. These supermoons appear much larger than usual, and have over the years produced some incredible photographs. During these events, the moon is sometimes closer to our planet, which makes it look much larger than it normally is. One NASA scientist said this pink supermoon will be 17,000 miles or 27,000 kilometers closer to us than average. Due to so many cameras being pointed at the moon, we got some really good photos from various locations across Europe. However, some people did manage to capture things they didn't expect. This is what happened to one woman who sent us the following photographs. She said the following, I was out with my son taking photographs of the moon when I snapped this picture. We were using his telescope that we got him for his birthday, which is a Dobsonian telescope 8 inch. It's great and picks up on the moon really well. After staying out for 30 minutes or so, we decided to head back home. It wasn't until I was looking through the photographs that I noticed something strange. I certainly didn't see this during the time, and I have no idea what to make of it. Whatever it is, it looks like a giant V. I've never seen anything like this before. The woman went on to say that whatever it is, it only appeared in one photograph. On first looking at the object, it does appear to be triangular or V-shaped. This unidentified object, however, could be a variety of things. For example, it could be a satellite, or some other type of space debris that just so happened to be passing by the moon. Astronomers have said the space above our planet is littered with various materials that humans have built. A study in 2013 said there's over 170 million bits of debris outside of our Earth that's smaller than one centimetre. There's over 670,000 pieces of debris between 1 and 10 centimetres, and around 29,000 larger pieces were estimated to be in orbit around the Earth. It's important to note that these objects will fall back to Earth sometime in the future. NASA have said there's around 3,000 human-made satellites in working order around the Earth. However, if the debris of old and damaged satellites are taken into account, the number increases dramatically. Astronauts have reported that every so often they'll see fast objects fly by the International Space Station, and that some of these do look strange when zipping past. Glowing orbs and other strange things have been seen outside of the space station. However, NASA have said that most of these can be explained, and they turn out to be normal space debris. Researchers have been doing studies to try and find out what we will look like in the near future. 
everything around us has an impact on our development as a species. The life on Earth is constantly evolving and this process never stops. We as part of this planet are also evolving. Human evolution is an extremely long process of various changes by which people originated. The earliest human trait was the ability to walk on two legs, and it has evolved over 4 million years ago. Thousands of our genes actually evolved in the last 40,000 years. Our brains are smaller but a lot more efficient. We have developed resistance to various diseases, and on top of that people are living longer. We have to understand our past in order to understand our future evolution. Interestingly, researchers have recently come forward and said that excessive use of smartphones could lead to people growing horns. This strange growth has been developing on the back of the skull. These bones are small projections that attach themselves to a tendon or a ligament. The research was carried out at a university in Queensland, Australia, and this involved scientists comparing over 200 x-rays of people aged between 18 and 30. Interestingly, this happens mostly in younger people and the researchers say this comes down to stress on the body. The data showed that over 40% of these people had in fact developed this small lump on their skull. One of the researchers had this to say, The growth can be linked to long-term pressure on the skeleton, mostly when people are moving their heads back and forth. One of the culprits is how we are using our smartphones. Studies have shown the average person spends around 4 hours on their smartphone every day. The researcher went on to say the following. We hypothesize that the sustained increased load at the muscle attachment is due to the weight of the head shifting forward with the use of modern technologies, and for long periods of time. Shifting the head forward results in the transfer of the head to weight from the bones of the spine to the muscles at the back of the neck and head. The increased load prompts remodeling on both the tendon and the bony ends of the attachment. The tendon's footprint on the bone becomes wider, and this is to distribute the load on a larger surface area of the bone. This study was published in 2016, and its purpose was to show how the human skeleton is still evolving. The researchers have said that if these horns develop it could lead to terrible posture and in the long term cause chronic pain. Scientists have said we currently know more about what's going on on the surface of the moon than what's happening within our very own oceans. These underwater worlds are mostly unexplored and many of them are hiding mysteries that are waiting to be discovered. Over the years there has been talk of giant sea creatures that could be living in the depths. One of these has become known as the USS Steen Sea Monster. This large ship was named after Tony Steen. No one knows where the event took place but it is said it happened somewhere in deep water. The crew noticed that suddenly the ship started to experience technical problems. It eventually led to the failure of a sonar. When the ship arrived home it was dry dock and immediately examined. It was said that whatever caused the damage was very big, perhaps even an unknown giant squid species. The creature had managed to damage the rubber coating of the sonar dome. Engineers later discovered that over 10% of the surface coating was damaged, and most of those cuts were very similar to those found on the suction cups of squids. However, the engineers said this wasn't a normal sized creature, saying the cuts were much larger than any known squid species. This has fueled speculations that the creature in question was over 100 feet in length. The claw marks were much larger than any reported at the time. The creature may have been up to 150 feet in length. Although this sounds impossible, we have discovered giant squids that were over 40 feet in length and some think that larger specimens could be lurking in the dams. Although this encounter sounds unbelievable, there have been past encounters that sound eerily similar to this one. One of these comes in the form of another giant squid sighting. Though it was rumoured to exist for many years, the elusive giant squid has been an incredible find for the scientific community. Going back in 2006, this species was first recorded after a research team used a large research vessel and rested it off the coast of Japan. There they used a large bait, and suspended the bait from the bottom of the ship to keep it dangling in the area to catch the large creature. The experiment was a success, as a large 24-foot squid came close to the bait and was captured on footage. 
However, as mentioned, much larger specimens have been discovered over the years, and some say it's only a matter of time before a larger squid is discovered. The Bucket's Timmer Monkey Man The Bucket's Timmer Monkey Man is believed to be a primate that lives in the jungles of Singapore. According to the local legends, this forest-dwelling creature is immortal, and has been living in the forest for hundreds of years. This mysterious creature was first reported by Japanese soldiers during World War II. Over the years, a number of local residents have since reported seeing the creature. The most recent alleged sighting of the Monkey Man was in 2007. All the alleged sightings of the creature have been in and around the Bucket Timmer Rainforest. The creature is believed to be 3 to 6 feet in height, and walks on its hind limbs. Bucket Timmer Nature Reserve is home to thousands of monkeys, and the researchers believe there is a possibility that the crab-eating macaque monkeys could be at times mistaken for the Monkey Man. However, the biggest difference between the description of the Bucket Timmer Monkey Man and the crab-eating macaque monkeys is their size. Over the years, many people have reported seeing the Monkey Man, and a few years back, a 48-year-old taxi driver reported seeing the elusive creature. According to the taxi driver, he was driving his taxi near the fire station located near the Bucket Timmer Road late at night, when he suddenly hit a strange creature that was running in the middle of the road. It looked like a very large monkey. The creature ended up getting injured as a result of the accident. However, shortly after this, it ran into the forest and wasn't seen by the man again. Another recent encounter with the alleged monkey man was reported by a 29-year-old woman. One cold, foggy morning, she was walking towards a bus stop when she saw someone near a rubbish bin. When she approached, the creature made a loud animal sound and ran into the forest. She described the creature as grey, hairy, walking like a human but having a monkey's face. The woman immediately called the police. However, the creature had vanished into the jungle and wasn't able to be located. A number of stories relating to the Monkey Man sightings have also appeared in local media. However, no one has been able to clearly film the creature, and researchers are still confused about the mysterious sightings of the Monkey Man and what it could possibly be.